post. in the last two postseasons. Boston. Which is the most in the game. Most Gary Boston. Over coach. Coach. You said Damon Stoudemire should have got it. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Damon got up out of there like, I'm out. About to go back to college. <laughs> really? You got up out of there? Yeah. yeah. He went back to uh, is where? Georgia State? Georgia State. Yep. Wow. Georgia Tech. I'm in Georgia Tech. Are we about to go on, fellas? Damn. With the honor call for greatness, the chosen a few that carry the gift of genius. Who do what they do? Who possess finesse of blessed with desire? It's true. I'ma say it loud, none other than who? Some swear by Nikes, others love Adidas. Rappers be rocking crowds, I'd rather rock arenas. You may have a nice shop, you super set with the pill. Who made the zero famous? It's Gil. Homie fire, he wet, cold as the Pacific. Some dudes try to guard him, no need to be specific. He dazzled up the crowd as a wizard for years. Was a hundred percent real, it's Gil. Welcome back to Gills Arena presented by Underdog Fantasy. Whoa, whoa. Whoa. Thursday, last show of the week. Yeah, we don't put four of them things up this week. Um, yes, we have. Oh, we did it. Mm-hmm. Bags are flowing. Checkmate. Back with the living legend, Gilbert Arenas. Okay. Head to toe. We got Brandon Jennings. You got a job interview? You- I know. <laughs> you know what I mean? Look at all booted and suited on him. I'm Who trying to take there. you from us? I go by Mr. Jennings now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mr. Jennings. Dog free, we got Rashad McCants in the building. And we got two very special guests making their first appearance in Gills Arena. First up, LA Hoops legend. Went straight from the high school to the pros. Won a championship with the Heat in 2006. Played 11 seasons in the league. Darrell Wright in the building. Yeah. 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 Thanks for having me, yeah. fellas. Thank That's you. That's your brand of favorites. Yes, yeah, hometown okay. favorites, man. Appreciate okay. the support. You're too, rocking fellas. the hat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. All in it. It's a tough crowd of favor. We, we, we support each other out here in LA. All right, ain't no beef. And <laughs> we got another special guest, go to jeweler to some of the biggest celebrities and sports teams. Whether you need some bling or a championship ring, he's the man you got to holler at. Jason Arashabin, aka Jason of Beverly Hills. What's going hey. on? Hey. Hey. Appreciate you guys having me. And y'all can see the box. We got some shit in the box. If y'all trying to run up on us, we at Gil's house in Santa Monica. We at a Santa Monica location. If y'all trying to pull up, but we don't want no smoke. But we got some things to cover today. He will be without Gabe and Vincent in Boston for Game Five. He's a starter, Gil. For what team? He. Mm. <laughs> That's what's up. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. All right, LeBron and Kyrie are trying to control the narrative, and the NBA is trying to stop down on flopping. But before we get into all that, remember, Underdog Fantasy presents this show. Go ahead, download the app. Use promo code Gill. They will match your first deposit up to hundred dollars. You can put some things in for tonight. They had that Jimmy uh, a higher, lower pick him a point five points last game. Gil, you need to get some special pickums cracking. That's what we need to get with Underdog. For real. For real, I do. But that pick only for like twenty dollars. I know. I'm That's like, the cap. I don't like that pick. No, they know. That shit is. Oh, they know. Because then you pick that, you can't pick nobody else. It's all twenty cap. At yeah. That. So you got to just throw in multiple of them things, man. Really. Twenty dollars out of it. You know? <laughs> and as always, fans in the, in the chat, we see y'all piling in right now. We appreciate y'all. Y'all are the reason that we have this show. If you drop a good question, we will feature it in our mostly fan segment at the end of the show. Make sure it's a good question. You can spam us. Let's trick that algorithm. Let's get these numbers up. And like I said, we will feature those questions at the end of the show in our Mostly Fan segment, my favorite segment of the show. But first things first, let's start about, you know, we, we talk about flopping all the time, right? So, you know, flopping is a major issue in the league. A lot of people blame the players. I blame the refs for calling that shit. But either way, league is trying to put an end to it. Uh, Shams dropped a tweet this morning, said the NBA's competition committee is discussing potential of an in-game penalty for flops that will result in a technical foul free throw. Trials possible at Summer League in July. So, Gil, start with you. Is it, is it technical for a flop good for the NBA? A technical foul or a technical? Tec- so, a free throw. So if you, but it doesn't count against you as a technical. I don't know. Ooh, that's a good mm. question. It all, it all that's depends. A good question. Um, okay, if, if the refs don't like it, don't call it. 
How about that? Just, if you don't call the flop, then we will stop flopping. But if I know I can, someone's backing me down and I can hit and you're going to reward me, why would I stop doing it? You know what I mean? So it's just like, if you really want to do this, don't penalize the players for adapting, adapting to something that's caused by the referees, mm. right? I'm adapting to what you're calling, right? If I know I can come off of here and bait you, I'm going to keep doing it to get this man out of the game. If you right. stop calling it, I'm going to stop doing it. Yep. So it's really the referees. Brandon, are you rolling with the, the flop rule? Yeah. Um, uh, well, no, actually, no, no, no I'm not because like, like Gil said, I mean, if you're going, if you're going like, just keep flopping and calling it, then and what's the thing? And also if that counts as a technical foul on you too, that's one yeah, thing they're yeah. going to have to clear up. Him got that's, if that's flopping. one tech, then it's like, yeah, that's, like, that's, like, that's, like they're going to be getting, th- it's going to be so many techs. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. But that's just free two points too. the tech. And that's more a one, free one, point, one free throw. a free point. So a game can be decided by that one, flop that flop. one little flop, right? And the technical should be, I mean, think about it. Like, if you get in a tech and it count against you for flopping, you're not going to flop no more. I don't know. Take, for, taking you out of the game. For me, as a, from a fan perspective, I'm looking at, I don't agree with it at all. I don't agree with anything that slows down the pace of the game. Yeah, there's sure. nothing more boring in a basketball game than watching somebody shoot free throws. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Instead of giving a technical foul, slowing down the game, Breaking up the pace of the game, just deduct the point. Yeah, just deduct the point. Not, mm. And I think the referees got to get better then. You yeah. Know, yeah, just like you mentioned, if something can give me the benefit or add more value to me scoring points, I'm gonna do it. Yeah. So I think the referees need to be more evaluated yeah. and not calling certain things. Uh, yeah. Does this rule? It feels like it bails out refs more than it actually punishes the flopper. For sure. And that's yes. what we were talking about. It's three refs on the court; they can't see all the angles. The goal is to trick them for your competitive advantage. That's, just a, you're try, that's, that's what it is. You're trying to take the responsibility out of the refs, which they are calling. And now, now you're enticing them. That it's easier for them to cheat now, <laughs> right? They can they can sway the game for just boop. Like it'd be a, a tie game. Someone tried to get a flop. Now you're gonna blow a whistle. Whatever we're gonna happen here, we get a technical free throw. That changes all of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How about this? If you do call it and it was a flop as a ref, you should be fined. <laughs> but that's what a then, replay Then it stops the refs from right. blowing a whistle. Mm-hmm. Knowing if I called it and it was really a flop and I got beaten by this player, I got fined for it. Yep. Right? Because who? what is a flop? We know the obvious flops, right? Mm-hmm. You know, backing down, I take it, I hit it, which we can say every single time a big man goes against a guard and the guard a falls, flop. that's considered a flop. Yeah. Yep. Right? We're strong enough to just sit there the whole mm-hmm. time, but that what's the point of that? That's an advantage. Me sitting there trying to guard Shaquille O'Neal or someone in the post, I, I suppose I take that flop, right? That's what it's called. Yeah. Right? So if you're gonna find find us for it and give us one point, shit. I'd rather take the one point than the guarantee two. The fuck are we talking about? This dunk or one point? Yeah. Let's flop. Call it, take the free throw. I mean, come on. Man. It changes though the replay aspect, right? Because the replay Slows the game down even Hate that. worse, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. So imagine what's happening with this new thing that's going to come in. Is it going to be a lot more replay because you're going to have to question the flopping call. You question the the ref saying, "Oh, that was a flop." Oh, let's go to the replay. Let's go see. It. <laughs> so we already know the ref going to make a bad call once, mm-hmm. twice, three times a game. So they'll increase the amount of times you can replay. Sure. Instead of that one, you get three. So now you got to be more lasting flop. like five hours. Now. Yeah, I, mean, that's like I hate the replay period mm-hmm. just because yeah. it's like, like you say, we questioning the referee's ability to have judgment on the floor. Now right. we can question that because they're wrong. Mm-hmm. We're like, that's that's, that's a bullshit call. I mean, you can replay anything really when, yeah. you, when you break it down. Right. Mm-hmm. So we got a great question from my guy, Mr. Ricky Spanish. He said, which NBA stars game will suffer the most if they did decide to implement, implement this rule? A star? Trey Young. It, it's, it, it, you already penalizing James Harden and Trey Young. You already done that, right? Um, now it becomes everyone. Yep. It's, not, it's the game itself that you're penalizing because when Steph shoots and he has his leg out, or that, those are considered flops, yeah. right? If they haven't noticed, just listen. When I'm trying to take a flop and you don't call the foul or blow the whistle, I'm giving up the two points because I just put our team out of position, Absolutely. right? When Marcus Smart is sitting there trying to bait James Harden, James Harden does this and he flops. If you don't call it, 
four on five. Absolutely. Right? That's a, the, you're giving them. So players are naturally realize they're hurting the team yes. by trying to bait the reps. Just don't call them. Just don't. Just sit there and say, get the fuck up. Yeah. Get the fuck out. You don't have to. <laughs> you, don't, you don't have to replay. You don't have to no free throw. You don't have to do nothing. Just don't call it. Right. Ass up, Just like when we say '80s basketball, and there's some reps that's out there in the '80s. Get up. Yep. God damn it. That mess the, like you, your your team would be mad at you more for trying to get a flop call and giving up damn near a four on five every single time. Our, your teammate would be like, yo, hey, come on, man, stop this shit already. Yeah, we do it every single time. It's You're costing hustle. us. Yeah, that mm-hmm. was our era, too, though. You remember the refs just be like, get your ass up. Then, you know what I'm saying? Get and your I, ass up. And man. we all played in China, too. what they tell you? <laughs> get, get, up, get, up, up, get up. Get up, man. We're not calling yeah, that. We're not get calling up. that today. Get things off. Get up. Get things off. Get things off. Get things off. Yeah, yeah. That's, That's funny. funny. That's yeah. funny. That's Talking funny. about rules in the NBA got me thinking. Gil, we'll start with you. What's one rule the NBA should change or implement? You get to be Gil Silver. Offensive goaltender. Mm. Uh, like, like Fever? That. Yes. I, I, as an offensive player, right, our, the goal is to put the ball in the basket by any means necessary, right? Besides the little basic rules of no traveling and shit like that. So if the ball goes and bounces... The reason that we're athletic is we can do shit that normal people can't do. Yeah. So if the ball is in a cylinder, what is the point of us not interfering with it? If my players can go up there and try to dunk it back in, that's part. that should be part of the game. So you're calling an offensive. It, it doesn't benefit nothing for, for calling an offensive interference on something like that. Like a lob, I can bounce it and get it off the rim. Right. That entices... Players to actually jump and try to to get that 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 extra two points. You know, calling the offensive fa- I mean, calling the offensive interference just seems weird. Defense makes sense. Yeah. Offense doesn't make sense. So you say keep it. Don't do FIBA rules where you can once that thing bounces, you can smack yeah. it. Off you can't. No, no, no. We 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 way too athletic for that type <laughs> of game. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like then, because at the point of the like, you got players that's like that are sit there and that as soon as it hit the rim, they can that smack that off. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So we're too athletic for that, but it should be allowed for the offense since we're the ones that's trying to score still. I like that. Yeah. Okay. More tip dunks, more highlights. I mean, you have more because right now it bounces. You know, players yeah, don't want to jump. Yeah. But is that as a scorer, would you be mad if I got Hell yeah! <laughs> That's my point now. You know how we get, my point now. I, I, don't, I don't know. I, I, we get more mad when we are scoring and yeah. then you interfere and then it's called off. <laughs> right? But if you just, if, if I do it and it counts as a two, I'll still be like, yo, I it counted as two. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it, 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 it kind of helps. It, it kind of helps the sport because it's, you'll have way more highlights because now you got more players trying to jump. Jump at that rim and go, I'm going to catch me a body. Yeah. Nice. yeah. Brandon, what you got? Uh, I think taking out the playing game and also um, if, you, uh, if you're like last team in the, in, the, in the conference, I think you should be penalized. Like, like if it's consistently, like if you're always last, like you should be penalized. So you shouldn't get no first, no top three lottery pick and you should be fine with money. Mm. Ooh, no, no first pick for being the boo team in the league? Nah, yeah. Because, like, like Gil said, we're, we're rewarding people for losing. Right. So it's like, no, like, to, so to stop that, you take that out. That's interesting. I mean, for me, what I think is that I hate, uh, this is kind of a statistical rule change. I hate watching a point guard make a great pass. The guy gets fouled, makes both free throws, and there's no assist. Mm. Mm. Yeah. There's like no like assist. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like, how many great passes have been made, guys? Go hit both three. It led to a basket. It led to two points. Give the man his assist. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What about if he splits the free throw? You don't get an assist. <laughs> yeah. You got to make both free throws. Okay. Oh, yeah. 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 Watch out, Matt. Watch <laughs> out. <laughs> Matt. Get Let me get this assist throw. off, nigga. I need both of them. I need both of them. <laughs> Shaw, what, what would you change or implement? Trade deadline. I'll leave it open. Oh, uh, uh, wait. I oh. can get rid of your ass at any time. <laughs> Ooh. Get rid of your ass at any time. Ain't no Even use stuff here, man. Yeah. Any time. Hey. And I can bring in motherfuckers any time. So Boston going into game five, they can trade for Brian real quick. Man, I need you real quick, bro. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you not that's performing. Great. Let me no, get. But that's what. That's what it end up happening. Yeah. That's what it end up happening though. When you think about that, like, I can any time. Like so, like right now, like if I want to make a trade with Dallas, Miami, Luka. and Dallas, I can bring. I can bring Luca over right now. What's up? Yeah. Nah. What's up? <laughs> two, What's up? 
Cheat out of here. Yeah, yeah let's bring them over here. <laughs> they do that in soccer. We can make the trade. They do that in, in some of the European leagues in soccer. They do that. Mm. How, how much Guys are coming in playoff time. Transfers. Yeah. Transfer fee. How much would you pay Luca to come play one Eastern Conference Finals game or one final? You'd pay, you pay him anything. Like right now, like Miami will pay anything to any player that they can make a trade. <laughs> Look at the garbage they got right now. Oh, I can God. trade. Oh, <laughs> oh Lord. I can trade my great. players right now. To get superstars, and it doesn't, it is not like the cap messes them up. There's no cap right, right. now. Mm -hmm. That cap does nothing to do with what? Trade. Then I can just trade their asses back out trade to the championship. Them. Oh, that's too much shit. Now, Boston, Boston's gonna cheat. They got too many. Boston and Golden State have too many, they have too many sources in the NBA. Well, let's say we cap the money though. Let's cap, let's, let's make it where you can only get. A certain type of player with a certain type of money, so you can't make a bunch of trades. So make one big trade. One big, but it doesn't count. But it doesn't count. It don't cost me. The, the season's over right now, so it doesn't cost against me. So I can say, all right, I want um, who's out there? Uh, I want get, I want Steph right now. And you giving up right? something too? Yeah, I give up. I got, I can give him my whole bench. All y'all, <laughs> boom, go there. All y'all go. I got Steph Curry now. And, now you and don't now got you, no bench. Now I can win a championship and then say, all right, trade back. No, you, only yeah, seven, back. you only got seven players now. Yeah. yeah. I don't care. I got Steph Curry. But you got back. seven players. It don't matter. When I Steph have... go down, what is it? I, ain't I, nobody I, else around. What if I need him for one game? <laughs> you only got seven players. One game. Seven. You need, and you, you rely on your bench. So you got Steph in. At least eight. He got three fouls. Oh, what you going to do? He got three fouls first quarter. What you going to do? It don't matter. I have Steph Curry. It does. <laughs> if he ain't in the game, now you lost half your bench and he on the bench. But that's the risk we're taking, right? We'll live with At least I have eight players. But um, that's the risk I'm taking. Yeah. Right? To win a championship, I just added Steph Curry to my lineup. And you lost I'm Boston, players. and I'm playing against Jokic and him, and I can add whoever I want, and it don't call. It don't, the season's over with. So it's not like the money actually matters. Right. The money don't matter at this point. I can yep. just make. I can just do whatever I want. We win the championship. He gets another ring. Trade his ass back. Get my team back. But it's go get what I need, not go get what I desire. It's I need someone to guard Joker. So if I'm Boston, I need to go trade for a big asset that's not playing right now that the can't be handled. Yeah, that, I'm Give gonna go Greek get Greek. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go get Greek if I'm Boston. Greek the freak and Steph. <laughs> That's NBA 2K. Six, players. Yeah, six yeah. players. Six players. Six players. Six players with that. D right, if you could change one rule and implement a new rule, what would you do? Mine would be the charge. Mm. I feel like that's fake hustle as well. Yes. We're rewarding guys from falling down. Mm. And then it's putting our superstars at risk, like we've seen with Giannis. Uh, he went out. Um, ja, you know, so I, I would say the charge. I feel like going vertical or blocking a shot. Because I, I hate seeing big fellas taking a charge. What are you doing? What Protect you doing? the rim, please. <laughs> oh, that saved, oh, my God, that would have saved me a lot of fouls right there. <laughs> For real. Yeah, most of my fouls, most of my fouls and turnovers were offensive fouls. For sure. So I got one, too, obviously, the, the campaign on my mama challenge. So if you could put, you know, one challenge per game, you could put it on your mom. <laughs> My mama. If I put it on my mama. But that's on my mama. Hard <laughs> back over. On my mama. On my mama challenge. <laughs> but if you become a repeat offender, then, you know, you get some penalties. And I would also say, too, after two overtimes, go like soccer. Like penalty kicks go one-on-one. -on -one. That's good. You got to go, you know, five five tries. You got to pick one from each squad to go one-on-one -on -one with each other. Tech, you know what's technical? I, I, technicals, um, like, let's say go that offensive, like, you know, when you get those um, – Hanging on the rim, yeah. yeah. Those should be fines, not actual personal texts. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, because you know if I'm hanging on the, that. that's, that's a my, I'm, I like it. I'm hanging on yeah, the rim. Like so, I'm yeah. hanging on the rim, and that counts as an actual technical that if I hit someone too hard, that's the same. Yeah, like nah, like there should be like some texts should be just fines mm -hmm. versus it actually counts. Like a slap in the glass. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That, yeah, go I'm back, say, that I'm counts say as that, the same. Yeah. Like so, Draymond goes up there and cuts the ref out. One, that's aggressive tech. Yeah. And then I'm hanging on the rim. I slap the glass. That's a tech. Get out. Out of here. Like yeah. oh no, nah, that's not, not the same. I've got yeah. that's just like the flop in my that. opinion. Yeah. Why am I getting penalized for a, a sick dunk I just did? Yeah. That's on me if I can't get back. Right. So there's a lot of things that you you can't you don't need to stop the game for or penalize the player like if, if you want to call it a fine just you just keep going <laughs> fine 500 whatever the fuck the fine is yeah. you can keep the game going and still you know give them a penalty right yeah 
Players got to pay the fines live too. They got to have a stack of like, re- there we go. <laughs> Listen, referee, <laughs> listen, straight cash. Only. Referee, like that. Who just got a technical? He ran up on the ref. No, the ref ran up on the coach, listening to him. Yep. Oh, Mike Malone. Yeah, yeah. Malone. and then re- yeah. they're going back and forth. He's Who's cussing. Down? He's Who's cussing, down? right? And then he gets a technical, right? Like I got, I don't like what you're saying. Tech, right? Both, both. The, the, the coach should be able to tech the uh, referees too. <laughs> I'll just get a tech. Ref, ref should be able to get techs. Tech. Uh, tech. Two, get out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're the new <laughs> We're the alternative. Or, or, or both, team, both teams should be able to, like, yeah. they should be like five refs, and we were like, all right, which one? You go down <laughs> like they do with the like game court. ball. Yeah. Like yeah. court. Like yeah. court. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. 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 Like, ah, yeah. we, yeah. we know what you're trying to do. We know what you're trying to do. I have the coach sub out refs. Yeah. 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 You can elect to sub out a ref, bring the ref off the bench. Yeah. New ref. Terrible. Yeah, yeah. Because we say a lot of that. Terrible tonight, man. Warm up. <laughs> yeah, it should be you know, it should be it should be it should be allowed that you know if you if you're talking about like game fives game sixes right and we should be able to look at the rest and say all right we both agree no yeah he, that he gonna fuck the game up we don't know what his agenda is that, yeah. that should be allowed yeah. yeah send him home <laughs> all right let's keep this thing moving there'd be a, there'd be a couple rest that would never they didn't ever get no games uh-uh. Next. Man, yeah. 20 brothers so let's talk about a really important topic let's talk about these nuggets <laughs> no i'm just kidding uh we're gonna talk about lebron <laughs> nuggets fans are so salty right now nobody talking about us move to la uh so lebron's basketball future may still be uncertain but his confidence in his game is unwavering after the lakers got swept in the western conference finals LeBron spoke with Dave McMenamin from ESPN about his foot injury and returning for his 21st season. Uh, so in the article, he said, uh, asked by ESPN if he believed a full summer of rehab could get him back to being the player he was before his foot injury. James nodded. Uh, McMenamin asked him why, because he, he said, I'm still better than 90% of the NBA, maybe 95%. Rashad, I see you. I'm, I'm going to come to you first. Is LeBron still better than 95% of the NBA? That'll put him somewhere in the top 20 to top 22 range. I'm just trying to figure out why we always talk about down LeBron every after he lose, like because he still wins. Jimmy Butler, man, it's all about. Are we Jimmy. talking Jimmy on the show? <laughs> like, oh, no, LeBron loses, and we give him so much more air time just for losing. Like, bro, and you, you got just, swept. You just and you got. Like I just it. brought the fucking broom in here. Like, why do we need to be team. talking about all the shit he left behind and? Uh, That's go, not the question. Is he? Go somebody else, man. I don't want to answer. He's this just, <laughs> He just got we seven days ago. He started the Jimmy Butler thing. Like he's now new Jimmy Butler fan. <laughs> now it's all about Jimmy. Y'all know I'm not. Y'all know I'm not Team LeBron though. Like, come on, man. If Lakers would have won one game. I'd be like, I'll right, give you a point. They were close, but but to get swept, I'm not talking about that shit. Y'all go ahead. He, he is absolutely 100 percent in the top five percent. The guy averaged 37 and eight this year. He shot a decent percentage. His free throw percentage went up. He's calling plays out on the floor Mm. while guys are playing. He is a basketball savant. With or without the athleticism that he had in his first 10 years in the league, he is so intelligent. He is willing uh, willing his team to wins. What he does are the intangibles that people don't know. This man was taking charges. What superstar at 38 years old, it will take two consecutive charges in the game. Those are the little things that make the difference. If you're asking me, is he... Is he top 5%? 100% he is. He guaranteed, because we are all callous. We're used to this greatness that we've seen. So if there's a little bit of slippage, just a little bit, we're counting him out. Yeah, we're right. saying he got swept. That's what I'm, got swept. I'm just pointing. I'm, that's cr- that's I'm crazy. counting him out. <laughs> the Lakers got <laughs> swept. <laughs> he got fucking swept. That's, hey, that's hey, crazy hey, because no they've been calling him Wash, what, since 2015? Never. Yeah, Wash King. Since 2000, King. never. No, the Wash King came with 2015, who, 16. Who said that? The Wash King. Skip. It was a thing. Skip. It was there a Wash King. The, the Wash King. That was a thing. That was a thing. Yeah, you like wasn't a man. You probably wasn't like two days though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You probably wasn't watching basketball. Never heard of LeBron <laughs> fan talk about some LeBron washed. Yeah, no, that was a thing. I'm just here to host. I'm not getting it. Wash you were LeBron <laughs> fan. Well, yeah. so, what you know, that? Wash King. Let me you know. let me see I what you know. Let me pull it up. But top five, yes, he's still top five. Yeah, he's still he's still number ten. So 2021 was I think or 2019 was the first time. Right before COVID. It was the Wash King. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. he was kind of yeah, like, washed out. In the, in the he was washed out average His worst year with the Lakers was actually his first year. Statistically, his worst year was the first year. He actually got better statistics as he went on right. and got older, which is 
unheard of in the NBA. You never see that happen. Listen, I think everyone, you know, just like anything, music, just anything in life, when you're just consistent all the time, you just want something new, right? So the fact that we've seen what the greats, how they fail from greatness, right? Mm -hmm. 10, 7, and then they're out of the league, right? So I, I think everyone's just like, all right, you average 20, 27, all right, just quit. Just, right. you just go. You watch. <laughs> like, we're just trying to make him exit, right? Because yeah. even if he goes to 22, they're going to be like, yeah, that, that's it. Right. The hell out. Me, if I'm him, listen, what you just did in catching Kareem, you have to be mindful that someone might try to catch you. For sure. Push it up. Fuck that. Get, mm -hmm. If you get two points a year for the next six years, mm -hmm. get them two points, add it to the total, because there's going to be someone 10 years, 20 years, 30 years from now that going to put themselves in a position to knock you out. Sure. So if you don't want to get knocked out, just be mindful. Yeah. There's always someone coming after you at some point. So stay A. You already got it. Just try to be. If you can build five, eight, nine more thousand oh, points, man, fucking do that shit, man. Right. Especially out of the game. Don't be no time. Jordan. Yeah. Don't be, don't, listen, do not be what Jordan did. He was so great that he didn't think that anyone would come after him, right? Even with the legacy, right? When we talk about Jordan versus LeBron, we always be, what if? Well, see, he retired. If he didn't retire, well, that's Jordan's fault. Right. Yep. That's Jordan's fault that he didn't take this. This, Of course he would have. Of course he would have. If he would have played all his... This, LeBron would still be trying to get that goddamn number. Yeah. But he didn't. That's that's his fault. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I'm saying, hey, you got four, five more years, you better keep putting them points up. I don't give a fuck what nobody say. I'm, yeah. I'm with him. I'm yeah, with I agree. Him. Yeah. I remember my last days, boy, I couldn't do nothing. So... <laughs> I would love to have 22 points a game, you know, <laughs> in my 20th or 23rd year. Yeah. Any of us, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I'm with you. Keep pushing the number up because how the game has changed now with the scoring, somebody's going to be behind it. Yeah. You don't know if they're mm -hmm. going to add four points, five. You don't know right. what, what's yeah. going to happen. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. yeah for sure. <laughs> you don't right. know what's going to happen. Yeah. So let, let's face the reality. Bron's going to be 39 this season if he does come back, 21st year. Can he still be the number one option on a championship contender? Or does he need to make that shift to number two? And if he does, is he even mentally capable to accept being the number two option on the team? So what, what does his number two option look like, though? Kyrie. I mean, I don't think it really matters. Yeah, I don't. Like, like I don't, because he's still going to get his. Like, I think he's the type of player that can still always get his. So it doesn't matter what, what option he is, as long as he's on the floor. But does he embrace that Paul George mentality now where it's somebody else's team? And I'm the two. But it's not like he's tried. He's do, he's tried yeah. it, but just mm -hmm. no one's stepping up. I don't. If I Kyrie comes there and averages thirty, and LeBron averages twenty eight, are we saying LeBron is the number two option? I mean, he's teeing it up for Anthony Davis, and he's done it publicly many, many times. He said the Anthony Davis should be the number one option. He's publicly said that a few times. He's just waiting for him to be that. Yeah. He's just not there yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we talked about that I think earlier in the week. We don't know if he'll ever get to that point, but. Rashad, I see you over there excited. No, it's because um, I just seen a TikTok about this. Like, LeBron has always been in, like, finals territory, the number two option, because the guys like Dwayne Wade and game sixes had 42 when it could have and should have been LeBron having the 42. He took the back seat, and he was allowed the, the number two to take the number one role. Same with Kyrie. 41 game six, I believe, came through. Clutch moments. When he has a guy who can come in and take clutch moments to the next level, it gives pressure release for him. But AD's not giving him pressure release where he can be sit, sit back in, in, in a game six and allow K, uh, AD, uh, AD to have like 45, 10 and do his thing. So that in this series, he wasn't able to do that. Right. He didn't have a number two that can catapult to number one and give him a break. Well, we seen him in game four say, look, I got a fucking number one option and shit in the first half. Where's my number two? Right. And I think that's what contributed to him making the statements after the game. Frustration. Yeah, He's like, I gave so much of myself yep. and we still didn't get a top, uh, to the top of the mountain. Yep. Yeah, especially you got a young guy like AD, a superstar in this league. He's, hey, I gave you my all in the first half. You got to be the closer. Mm -hmm. And I feel like why D. Wade and Kyrie had those opportunities because of the game playing against LeBron. Mm. So that opens up the floor for these guys to be successful. So 
It, it reminds me of the, the Shaq and Kobe, right? He has understood that, okay, the first three quarters, I'm the number one option, you're number two, right? Down the stretch, you're the number one option, I'm number two. Because what you do, I can't do. Yeah. Shaq, mm -hmm. you can't be the number one option if they have hack a Shaq. Yes. Right. You can't so, make free throws. Yeah. So yeah, one through three, you dominate, mm -hmm. revert it, now it's Kobe's. See, if you don't have the, if you're not mindful of you, what the game is and what your game is, it kind of pushes this. Yes. Right? If Shaq, if you can't shoot free throws, they're going to do this. You can't be the number one option when we're trying to win. We have to give it to Kobe. He can shoot the free throws. He can hit the shots. He can go to one-on-one. -on -one. That's what made the D-Wade look great with LeBron yeah. and made mm -hmm. Kyrie look great. Mm -hmm. Those last five minutes, we're going to win or lose on what Kyrie and D-Wade do. Yep. I'm one through third. Mm -hmm. I'm getting everybody involved. Yeah. But when the elements of the, it, I don't want to shoot free. If I can't shoot free throws, I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want to shoot free throws at the end of the game. Mm -hmm. That's that's the guy, mm -hmm. and that's what he don't. That's what he don't have. Mm. That's what he don't have here. So when he's those last two shots, did he want to take those? Probably no, not. No. no. Yeah. You could tell. You can see it all. It, because it, it's he knows it's it's a forced shot. Yes. yes. And yeah. those are probably when we look at it, those go back. Those are probably the two worst decisions he had yeah. made in his basketball career. But is he working on forced shots? You know, we work on last minute, last mm -hmm. second shots where it's like, let me go to my package for my last second shot. It don't look like he got that. Basically. I'm going to my. Three, two, one. That's what I'm saying. So why does he have the ball in the last because in the last seconds of the game? And he know he don't got that. Because he wants to drive, suck it in, throw it. The Schroeder play, like we talked about. Well, LeBron does not have a signature move, like you said, for that last second shot. The, Every, the fuck you three. The you the fuck you step back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The fuck you three, the love fuck you, the love fuck you three. Like, that's what the, 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 the textbook definition. We played right to be that guy, to be the guy who ends games. Right, you have to be a one on one player. Yes, for sure. He is not the one on one player mm -hmm. like Jokic. Right, Jokic is. I can see why he fell in the second round. If you make him play one on one, two on two by himself, his attributes don't kick in. Right. What he's great at, you can't see that shit in the NBA combine. No. Right? You have to put him with nine other players, and then you can see what makes him intelligent and brilliant. Yeah. Same thing with LeBron, right? So when you're talking about the end of the game, that's a one on one juggernaut yeah. type of player. First, he had to have the first step, quick release. He can slow the game down. He can visualize. He know where he's going. Like, he can do that all in seconds. Yeah. That's never been him. Yeah, I mean, it's just like... He has moments, but it's not, it's not what he is. That's not his expertise. That's right. Kobe's expertise. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's Jordan's expertise. A yeah. Paul Pierce, that's what they're yeah. really good at. Yeah, just like Milwaukee Bucks, right? When you saw them win the finals, clearly Giannis is the best player. When the game's on the line, who's going to shoot that shot? Chris Middleton. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Chris Middleton, because he can create the space. Mm -hmm. He can hit the open jumper. You're not going to have Giannis doing a fadeaway three mm -hmm. or a 20-foot right. jumper. No. 100%. But clearly Giannis is the better player. Mm -hmm. It's also confidence, right? <laughs> Chris got the confidence <laughs> as a scorer to know, like, all I need is a little space. Right. Get this bitch off. Yeah, yeah. Giannis don't know. like He's like, <laughs> eh, let me get rid of this bitch because I don't know the first thing to do to create the space. Or it have the confidence to hit the shot. So the same thing on the other side with LeBron, I always felt like he lacked confidence in the like the nut cutting times. Even if you're gonna get like fouled for a free throw, LeBron's always had trouble with free throws. So that was always in the back of his mind, like, fuck, I gotta make these. Instead of him being downhill, knowing I can get this layup, get to the line, this is easy. So his confidence in the nut cutting time is like it's questionable. Yeah. So he needs that Jimmy Butler level of confidence. I, I believe so. Okay. Sure. <laughs> Fifty two in a game <laughs> seven. You feel, me? you feel me? So we got some Fan. some new updates on LeBron in this situation. Shams went on Pat McAfee's show. Uh, said LeBron played the last few months of the season with a torn tendon in his foot. Uh, he's going to take the next couple of months to get re-energized. Still uncertain if he's going to need su surgery. So it's still unsure whether LeBron will have surgery or when he will do it. I'm not going to fuck my summer up. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. <laughs> that's funny. That's 
That's hilarious. Scotty. Scotty. I'm not going to fuck myself. Bro. So, question is, should LeBron consider taking significant time off before returning next season? But if he does that, can the Lakers pick up the slack and still be a First of all, team? LeBron started working out probably yesterday. Come on, bro. man. Like, I mean, we've, we done watched this for I mean, 19 years. Mm-hmm. Not going to fool me. 48 hours, he's already working on his body. He's going to be in there. We're going to see him listening to some new song. He's going to be in the weight room doing some. <laughs> you know, so we already know how he does. He's going to work the first month or so working on his core, working on his strength, getting his body back repaired. So it's not like he's just going to sit there and rest. So he's already working on his body. Even if he ain't showing it, he's already started working. 48 hours, he's already working for, you know, next season. Should he take uh, games off to start the season? So you take some time off. You're 21. I think you earned that right. If you if he don't start the first 10 games of the season, he might as well just sit the fuck out. Because hey, you don't go 0 for 10 for then try to make the playoffs. Yeah. No. I mean, nah. Two depends on who they get too, though. Like, like I don't think it's really up to LeBron. It's up to the Lakers uh, front office, the moves they make. Yeah. Like, like you know, I mean, he could sit out, you know, 10 games, but long as you got some. You know, some guys with you, I think you'd be all right. I mean, the proof is in the pudding. Look at this season. I mean, when D'Angelo, when that big trade came and Beasley, D'Angelo, and Vanderbilt came, LeBron was hurt almost, I think, game two. Yeah. They had a 15-game stretch without LeBron. And yeah. guess what? They played well. Very they well. played well. And then LeBron came in. They had to adjust, adjust. He played off the ball a little bit more. But they were successful in the playoffs. They, I mean, they overachieved, let's face it. All right? They overachieved. Yes. So I think that yes. LeBron yes. could take... Yes, 20 are. games off, the first 20 games off, get it his foot right. It steps to success. Overachieved? They made steps to LeBron James? They overachieved. And I got Anthony Davis? Yeah. They was not supposed overachieving to be Overachieving is this team right here. This is overachieving. <laughs> Don't, I, I, this is overachieving. This is, that is, this is literally overachieving this basketball. This is what we doing. This is what we the doing. Lake, you're talking about the lick. Come on. We got this a, is a we disappointment. Got a hit this is a disappointment. That's why it's not overachieving. Wow. Is it? I have... Arguably the number two best player to ever play, who averaged damn near 27 and something this year, mm-hmm. right? And then I have Anthony Davis, who's arguably shit. He's already top 75, right? Right? <laughs> right? With them two alone, mm-hmm. those two alone are better than the whole Miami Heat organization. Why is he even top 75? Who? AD. Because they did it. It was a curve, though. I mean, Anthony Davis showed up every other game. It was. A, it was. A, it was on the curve. They did that when they did him, Dame, Kawhi. It was more on a curve of the trajectory of their career. Got it. Right? If so it was like, all right, because you got, it's the next 25 years, so you, they're going to wait for these guys to put him in for the next 25 years, so I think they just waited. Yeah. Nasty. All right, so let's talk a little bit. Nasty. And as we're seeing on this show, it's all about narrative. Obviously, Nuggets are in the finals already. We're going to talk about them, Nuggets fans, next week once we get closer to the finals. <laughs> we're trying to keep y'all engaged, keep y'all watching this show. Y'all say y'all want to hear Nuggets, but as soon as we tell, talk about Nuggets, them numbers start dipping. I don't know where the fuck y'all be going. Are you serious? Where, where's the beautiful basketball fans? Oh my God. So we got 5,400 people in the chat right now. But uh, according to Eric Pincus, at least one Western Conference executive isn't feeling LeBron's uh, con- a power to control the convo. So he said, LeBron will suit up next year. He just changed the conversation. Now we're not talking about a sweep. We're talking about LeBron in retirement. Thank you very much. He loves to control much. the narrative. I know, I, I knew you was going to enjoy Thank you. It. I knew you was going to enjoy this one. That's why we kept it, kept okay. it in the chamber. But So we, we've seen Giannis talking about how there's no failure in sports, just steps to success. You know, Josh saying he needs to be a better leader. And now Bron speaking candidly on his NBA future. But why do people have such an issue with LeBron controlling the narrative? Because they can't. <laughs> if I, listen, yep. if I just got yep. swept yep. and I can throw yep. some shit out there, yep. y'all just take it to it. Hey, 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 hey I'm going to do it. <laughs> Why not? Like, yeah. I, but come on, man. I don't want to sit the rest of my summer. Y'all talking about it. We got swept the whole goddamn summer. Right. Nah, I'm about to retire, y'all. Right. And then everybody talking about retirement. Cool. Ooh, <laughs> sit good. back, relax. Now y'all That's talking it, about how on. great I've been for yeah. 20 years. Man, you would think LeBron's that calculating. You Fuck think LeBron, yeah. really? For sure. yeah, yeah, for sure. No, for, for sure. sure. They for told sure. them yeah. reporters not to ask him the same question they asked Giannis. He did that? They add, They told them reporters, uh-huh. so why, clutch sport, clutch, what do you call them, clutch points, whatever. Hey, don't ask LeBron <laughs> the same shit you asked Giannis because he, he ain't got the same. He, they ain't got no answer for that. LeBron, was this year a failure? I'm going to think I'm going to retire. Nope, the answer, is, the answer <laughs> would be no. I think I'm going to retire. 
Not for them, it wasn't a failure. It wasn't a failure. No, no, it wasn't a failure for the Lakers, though. He said he don't, no. he don't play to go to conference championships anymore. He plays to win titles, so it wasn't a success. Maybe Ooh. he. So what is it? What is it? What does it mean when it wasn't a success? We already know. Okay, it, it was a step to success. A step. <laughs> but then, <it's> like <laughs> a step. but that wouldn't work. That wouldn't have worked with LeBron because one was ranked number one and played the whole season as the number one seed. Damn near. The other one was. Was they were to get in. They Steve were right. trying to was, get in, so it can't be a was fight. They was you 13. just said they what overachieved. Was the re- what was the result? But you just said they overachieved. I just want to ask you what the result was. They went to the Western Conference Finals. The result, the end result was what? They got swept. They beat swept and lost. Five they minutes ago, so you just everyone's said they in the same pool, <laughs> eating the same barbecue, watching the same finals. Like man. They were even Western Conference. You, just, wait, wait, wait. We you lost. just said they overachieved five minutes ago. I didn't ago. say that. Yeah, you agreed. You was said like, that. You was like, yeah, overachieved. They can't overachieve and be failures. Yes, they can. No, they can't. Because you lose. <laughs> no, no, <wait. laughs> Nigga, when you lose, you no, lost. No. You're a failure. You no. lost. No, you don't not, get it? Not, you don't get it? It's an L. No, that's not how. Yeah, it. winners and losers. There's no. one winner and there's everyone else. But, mm, mm. If you wasn't expected, it, 99.9% of everyone did not have them making the playoffs, let alone Western Conference Finals. Yeah, sure. 99%. Yeah. So sure. that means they overachieved because they got there. Bucks, 99.9% had them making it to the finals right. or the Eastern Conference Finals. They got out the first round, which means a disappointment. Yes, but what was the results for both sides. It doesn't matter. It does. Because the results for 29 other teams is going to be the same thing. Yeah, because they all lost. So they're all failures. Yes! Okay. The winner wins! The winner wins! No, because they beat the right. champs. They beat the champs. It was a bad matchup for the Warriors. And Very easy, though. Yeah, yeah they, easy for I don't think it was a... I thought it was a success. Yeah. For them to make a trade like that for D'Angelo the Russell, those three guys. Warriors. Yeah, they yeah. did have a successful year. No, they did have yeah. a successful year. For yeah. sure. Absolutely. For sure. Like Miami Heat, if they don't win it this season, successful. Yeah, facts. 100%. Huge success. If they don't win it. If they, if they, if they, listen, if they lose this series somehow, what they did this year with that roster, yep. guaranteeing Jimmy That goes Butler. down as a Hall of Fame coach. Jimmy 100%. Butler is like, yo, we failed, bro. I don't give a fuck what he's saying. I'm talking about, <laughs> look, I don't play on delusional. We uh, failed, bro. On reality. Reality we, is this roster is hot garbage right. as a NBA team. You got them to the Eastern Conference Final. Jimmy Butler, soldier. Mm-hmm. Spro, Hall of Fame. Are you saying they garbage? Hall of Fame. And, and one Who, of who's not players. starting today? They made it there Hold twice on. in Hold a row. On. Hold Two on. years in a row. Watch they made it let me tell you how garbage it is. Who's not starting today? According to Underdog NBA, uh, a subsidiary of Underdog Fantasy, where you can download the Gills Arena app, use promo code Gill, and get a hundred dollar deposit match. Uh, Gabe Vincent will not start. Gabe Vincent game. is not. Start. Who the fuck is that? Dennis Schroeder. <laughs> Who the fuck is Gabe Dennis, Vincent? I don't even know. He's a flame. Point. He got a flamethrower. Have you been watching? He is a him starter play? for the Miami Heat. Does he have to have a name to be good? <laughs> to the point He's where good. news. <laughs> like no one gives a fuck. Wait, what is Jimmy Butler? Is Jimmy Butler all right? Cool. We good. Vincent. No one gives a fuck. Come I on, mean, bro. I guarantee you, whatever the line was, Vincent, whoever, whoever the other two, if they not playing, I don't think no one acts. No Miami Heat fan is like, oh my God, Vincent. Oh my God. We're going to lose. Vincent's going. Hell no. Come what? on. I mean, listen, Vincent has contributed a lot, though. You think yeah, what do you mean? 17 and 29. He's last happy. Game. That's what's up. He's happy. That's what's up. Dude, they're 18 He's and 5 happy. with Gabe Vincent in the lineup in the playoffs. He's happy. Vincent? He's 18 and 5. 18 and 5. Happy. Listen, he I'm has to. He's capping. He you don't hear this nigga capping? They got a starter who literally plays six minutes out, 12 minutes gone. I think, I think with the Miami Heat, you just they caught the flame, right? Mm-hmm. We got to look. Are the Miami Heat the 200-pound girl that's beautifully shaped or the Miami Heat, the 200-pound girl that's fat and out of shape? And I'll tell you why. Because during the regular season, you're looking at guys like Max Struess, who shot 35% from the three-point line. Respectable, not great. He's shooting 45% in the, in the playoffs right now. Gabe Vincent, we just talked about him. He's a 10-point-a-game average score in the regular season. What, is he, what did he do last two games? 17 and 29. Yes. Mm-hmm. Are this, are, is this the player we believe them to be, what they're playing in the, in the playoffs? No. No. They're overachieving. They're doing a great job. But this is not them. This is not them. 
Yeah. Jason of Beverly Hills makes jewelry and, and drops gems. I like it. <laughs> drop your hey, gems. Hey, hey, and I like get that point. It's just that if they up their production, just like we talked about with Aiton and the Suns, right? You say good players get to the playoffs and they go up in their production. You just explained it. Mm -hmm. So you can't be a YMCA team if in the regular season we've been here and we get to the playoffs and we say it's time to step it up right. because we have people hating on us being, you know, non-drafted players, second rounders. They say, hey, man, we, we ain't good enough to be here, so let's step it up a notch, right? right? Because I didn't see the other side doing that. But, the, hey, YMCA players have some type of – energy battery pack back yeah, there to I be do. able to cut it on they like screws. Mm -hmm. I'm shooting 45% now because Jimmy Butler gave us confidence. That's, a, they, that, that's what I'm saying. Whatever happens now, it don't matter. Right. They should get statues. That team, that roster is so horrible that I'm like, you know what? The fact that you guys are here, I salute you. Right. Jimmy Butler, Thank you. whatever you ask for, it's yours. Spro, retire, statue in the front. What you did with this team, listen, what you did with this team is better than what you can say you did with LeBron James and Dwayne Wade. 100% agree. Yeah. 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 It makes you a good coach. It makes yeah. you a good coach, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. but that's what I'm saying. Like, Does it make you better than Pop? Tyler, listen, yeah. Tyler, Tyler Hero's Hero, gone, tonight. Vincent is gone, <laughs> and you got this garbage. I'm going to keep saying garbage <laughs> to the championship. Jimmy Butler, what's the name? You got this is better than any goddamn ring you could have gotten. I'm sorry. Agree. Yeah, Would you have LeBron James and 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 D Wade in them and, and Bosch. Chris Bosch? You won a championship. Congratulate. Right. This is your real work right yes. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yes. Agreed. Miami. Over I agree. Even, hey, Spo. Even I agree bubble, with that. The yep. bubble as well. Yeah. You're getting all the way to oh, the yep. finals. Yep. You know, it surprised a lot of people, but. I think with just how the Heat prepare throughout the year is a little bit different than other teams. Is it that? Is it that different? Oh, it's totally. Different. Yeah, they have a body fat percentage requirement oh, yeah. every, every week. <laughs> weight and body fat. Sheesh. And then they practice. So it's not a get what you need. You're gonna practice. Right. You're gonna be taped. You're gonna have knee pads on, <laughs> and we're gonna go at it. And we're gonna talk about about that in just a mm -hmm. second. But good, we gotta talk about LeBron, one of your former teammates. Chat's been asking about this, so we're gonna. Give the chat what they want. One of your former teammates has some, some controversial things to say about LeBron. Uh, Shannon Sharp jumped on the show today. Your name came up. How do you feel about it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 Shannon, what would he say? Um, he, should, he should focus on me. This former teammate. I know names. Kwame Brown. Come on, goddamn. We know who. <laughs> I'm just, you know. All right, listen, listen. I'm not trying to get in it. Listen, I'm just going to. Uh, 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 Y'all can leave me out of it because, listen, he don't want these smokes. He don't want these problems, okay? Like, I've been smoking Kwame Brown bus packs for the last year. Now, should I think I got me a pack? <laughs> I got a pack right here. I'm, I, look, I'm about to go smoke this right after this. Wow. He don't want these problems. He don't want the problems. Wow. Did they say number five? Yeah, number five smoke all for this. Oh, I smoke my God. bus packs all day. <laughs> so he don't want these issues. He needs to stay so the people he can fight against, because he he don't want this. So um, that's between you two. He run this lane, he getting dropped like usual. Yeah. Gil, this wasn't even in the rundown today, and you just had the. <laughs> I keep packs on me. Oh, wait. You just had it. Too. <laughs> I keep my keep. Wait. This, this was not in the black, rundown today. Is that a black and mild. Wait, is that black, black and mild. And that's the new. Pack. That's the new. The new. Version. The new joint. Yes. Yeah, new flavor. They the not the secret black and mild. No. No. He just got the new one. Yeah. I got an office full of packs <laughs> that I can smoke. So they don't want these problems, okay? God damn it. I'm just saying. I have this every show. Every show in the Just in case off. the topic come up, I can pull it out. <laughs> oh, I, I forgot to tell you that. Wood Number chips five. or plastic? This guy. Huh? Wood chips or plastic? I got, I, it don't matter. Okay. Change the filter. I got a filter. I got, got non filter. I got every flavor. Whatever flavor of fucking bus packs you want, I got. Okay. We get this. We I'm get this done, show to ten thousand. As you guys know, it won't be a black and white. It's gonna be a black and white. We are gonna put some of that flavor in there. And get it really going. We gotta white get like him to ten k. You already know at twenty k. We can't, you know, underdog <laughs> didn't appreciate. So we can't talk about at twenty k. But you know, we are taking it up a notch to another level. So we got six thousand people in the chat. But speaking of controlling the narrative, Kyrie jumped on IG live yesterday to tell people to stop playing with his name. I'm a free agent this summer, but I am in no rush to make a decision. And uh, the speculation around my name from all these 
individuals that get on TV and have these personalities. Let me say that. I'm on. I'm on live here. Yeah. Just give me one second. Um, all these people that have, um, you know, these platforms, and and I'm talking about the TV personalities, the the sports folk that try to mix sports with politics and lifestyle and shit like that. Like when they speak on my name and and, and they're talking about um, potential teams that I'm going to, can y'all please? I respectfully like. I'm asking you, please stop paying attention to that. Like, I am in no rush to make a decision. I know what's ahead of me. So, Kyrie out here looking like a, a hood Jedi. <laughs> I'm just saying, come to the Lakers, Kyrie. <laughs> come to the Lakers. We are not a TV show, so we are not included in that. We are everyone's favorite YouTube series. I know who he was talking about. People who wear suits. And Jess, you kind of got to see, but you got the tough crowd shirt yeah. on, so it don't count. <laughs> it don't count. Real one, but it's real one. You know, Brandon, you got, but you know, this yeah, is the yeah. first time we see you, so we already know they're trying, to, no. they trying yeah. to snatch you. Yeah. They're trying to snatch they you. Trying to, yeah. yeah, I'm who, just like, I just was? got out trying to find a job. <laughs> trying to get a job. <laughs> you know, you first y'all get out, hiring. Like, y'all hiring. Yeah. Look, I had this shit in here for two years. Two years. <laughs> <laughs> it better not be Skip. It better not be Stephen A. If it's Cam and Mace, we, you know, look, you got to do what you got to do. Like, we, we'll take that one, but. If Brown wants Kyrie, do the Lakers have to listen and try to make that happen? Or is that foot going to be foot? Listen, I, I, uh, it's, it's what he's saying, I, I really get it. You know, sometimes you want to go unnoticed so you can move better. You know, when, when, you, when you have people still throwing out the potential, like, of this is where you can go, this is what you're going to do, it kind of it messes up moves. Yeah. And he's, you know, where he's probably going is kind of probably putting too much pressure on him to make decisions. And he's like, yo, y'all, y'all focus over here. Yeah, the games are going on still. Y'all focus on Because, you know, once the season's over with, nobody's going to be talking about basketball no more. It's straight football, WNBA. Yeah. So I think he's just trying to get out of the window so he can really try to figure out what he's going to do. I agree with that. Um, yeah, I know it's going to be a hard decision because of the last two places that he went it didn't work out. So I know it's a stressful thing, especially a guy that's trying to protect his legacy and continue to win championships. So uh, you don't want that pressure on him so he can make the right decision and not, you know, listen to these other guys and end up going to a, a spot that don't fit him. So I, Kyrie, out of respect for you, we're not going to talk about Kyrie, but let's talk about if a player had Kyrie's skill set, ability, was on the Mavs, it was going to become a free agent. Not Kyrie, but a hypothetical player like Kyrie. <laughs> Where would this hypothetical player like Kyrie's talent and skill set be best used? Oh, man. I'm just still kind of stuck on the Kyrie. Like, why he won't just uh, accept the role of showbiz. Like, you don't have to engage with the, like, allow the fans in the, in the drama and the suspense of where you're going to go build up for the, the culture. Like, I don't think that he should have to do an IG Live and tell everybody, oh, don't listen to D. I don't know where I'm going. Like, we all know. We don't know where nobody going. No. Like, we don't want you to go up and do what LeBron did and make a decision and be on TV and shit and be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, keep it suspenseful. Like, we, we don't want to know that you're going to go here or go there. It's just like uh, NCAA when you're doing the, the hat reveal. We don't know where you're going to go until you go. That's the whole point of us building up. Oh, he might go here. He might go here. He might go. Like, that's beautiful entertainment, right? So if we stop taking away from that just because you're sensitive and you're getting too many comments and DMs and you buying into the culture of this new shit. Like, leave that shit dead. Let it be a build up, bro. We, you one of the greatest players we've seen. It should be only right that we fucking troll your ass and try to figure out where you're going to go. And Brandon, just we talked about this before the show. Shouldn't Kyrie want want his name to be in the spotlight? Like, don't, don't wouldn't it feel a little bad if we was not talking about Kyrie at these points? Yeah, I mean, I think with everything he went through this year, you know, um, and you know what they label him as, you know, hard to deal with. You know, um, you know if if he's able to, does he want to play basketball? Is he going to show up? You know, is he going to go off and do his own little thing that he does? Um, but I would like to see him in a Bucks uniform. Okay, mm, you know, Bucks <laughs> uniform. You know, next year. You know, I think he'd come on down to Milwaukee with Giannis. And uh, you know, get another chance at a ring. It shows. I mean, it just shows you that, like, you know, I, you know, I, I just, you know, as players, we are sensitive, right? Mm-hmm. When it comes to people that talk about us that ain't never been in the situations we've yeah, been in, right? Never been in the rooms we've been in. So, um, you know, we've been really protected since middle school, 
right? If we were great, we were good, everything was positive. Exactly. We didn't hit negativity until we came to the NBA. You're right. I ain't like, what, what, what is this? <laughs> what is this, right? <laughs> For real. Like, who is like, this thing? He said, like, so that, first, that first article, that first bad article had us sleepless. Like, oh, man. <laughs> going to, like, going, thinking, like, man, like, I'm serious, right? So, you know, we still haven't adapted as, yes. like, NBA players to real negativity. It still really gets, even if the shit's true. Right. Even if they call me a ball hog and I had 60, zero, and zero, I still don't want to hear that shit, <laughs> right? It's still the, the way the game play. We're going to have this shit. The way the game played in the locker room and the, the way the ball bounced, I couldn't see. Right? We're going yeah, to figure out some shit to make it seem a little bit better. So with him, it's just, it's no different than anybody else, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, I get it, but as being a, a hooper and he's – one of the best hoopers out there, we're gonna talk about you because you're you're great. Yeah. Mm. Right? You're great. No no one's gonna talk about, you know, at the end of the season where most of the the Heat players go or most of the Boston players go. Let's just be honest. No, you know, they're gonna be free agents and no one's really gonna give a shit. Yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> no one's gonna give a not, shit. Not right? yeah, you know, so yeah. like we wanna know where yeah, we're only Kyrie's there. going, we wanna know where Jaden Brown's going. Mm-hmm. Right? Yep. Those are the number two. Middleton is going to have to take a backseat to these two, yep. right? There's going to be a whole bunch of free agents. The number two, where's Kyrie going? Where's Jordan Brown going? Where's Dame going? And where's Dame going? Where's Dame's yeah, going? Yeah, where's Dame well, going? well, Dame is not even a free agent, but if he gets traded. Yeah, yeah, right, you yeah, know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So it's like one of those things where we really want to know. We're like, we already know James Harden is going back to Houston, so he's off the window. Mm-hmm. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a blessing yeah. that, that people are talking about him. And yeah. he should look at it as a blessing because there's, you know what I mean, people wish that someone would talk about them to feel that sense yeah. of security. It's a blessing. And, and, and guess what? When he's done playing, no one's going to talk about him anymore. So you, it comes with the territory. You're going in the NBA. You know the NBA is a public sport. You need to know that this is what's going to happen. You have to accept it, and you have to embrace it. Yes. Mm-hmm. And if you don't want to talk about you, just say you come to the Lakers, and we good. <laughs> but then we're talking about you way more. So yeah, I don't think that happens. So Brandon, <laughs> Brandon, the chat said you look like uh, you're ready for an interview to be the Bucks head coach. You said Kyrie. You know, if you had Kyrie and Giannis. <laughs> Kyrie and Giannis coming to win that ring, but we just got to remind you that uh, Kyrie thought that the Mecca floor in Milwaukee a few years ago was actually from the 60s and would fuck up his knees. So you got to get his mind right to play to play with the Damn. Bucks. But speaking of rings, <laughs> this is how we segue on that ass. Speaking of rings, we got Jason of Beverly Hills here. You know, you already know we need to see some of that bling. And we've been wondering what's in that box. Didn't know if it was blunt. Didn't know if it was a... <laughs> Wanna kill special packs? <laughs> but let's let's bring these rings out. Let's see what we got. All right, let's do it. Boop, boop, boop. It'd have been funny if it was like the Denver 2023 ring. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what you got in the oh I see the Bucks ring is in there. I see, State, State. I see some Fugazi Warriors Dynasty rings in there as well. <laughs> Those better be Cubics. You're supposed to be playing the Rocky music, hey, theme that music bug, in the that background. That Bucks one looks nice. That's the Golden State flip one. I don't hear the zoom in on them boys. That's the one that pops open? Yeah, that's the one, yeah. That Golden State one pops open and reveals all the trophies. Okay. And then what's the one you made where you, where you made it a flip, but you didn't tell them? You... So that's a funny story. That's the 2018 Golden State Warriors ring. Okay. Mm-hmm. The and, KD era ring, okay. Yeah, and, and that one you see has a blue face. That's this one I'm right here. I'm a blue this face. summer, but I am in no rush to make a decision. Well, uh-oh. We are a real show, ladies and gentlemen. We, we do fuck up on occasion. Players fuck up, pimps fuck up, you already know. But what were you saying about so the first ring? So that particular ring, and you, every time we go to a team, we got to take the advice of the players on what they want. And that particular ring, we actually finished that ring, the 2000, the back-to-back year. Finished the ring, had blue in the center. I'm at out one night. I'm at Tau. I run into Kevin Durant. Now, mind you, Kevin Durant was going into his last year of his contract, okay. right? Kevin Durant tells me, we're, we're sitting there having a few drinks. Kevin Durant tells me, he goes, you know what? I'm excited about the ring. I can't wait to see what you designed. Let's make sure there's a lot of white diamonds, not too much blue in there. I'm like, oh shit, I already finished the damn ring. It has a whole bunch of blue on the top. So we had to go back, reconfigure the ring so that the top actually flips and you could change it from blue to white to make sure everybody was happy. Ooh, I'm gonna be real, if you was a real Lakers fan, you'd have been like, look KD, Steph said he want blue. <laughs> 
That's crazy. No, that's right. Right. <laughs> but Deb, so how long did that take you? Like, you know, typically, how long does it take to design these rings, and how soon do the team get them? Right, opening night usually. Right? So in the NBA, the teams always get them on opening night, and it usually it's like a three-month process. Some teams des design uh, make decisions quickly. Some teams drag it out. <laughs> at the end of the day, it's up to me to make sure it's actually there on opening night. Okay, for sure. And just looking back at your careers, it's an interesting story. Anthony Mason is actually the reason that you became a jeweler. So what's, what's the story behind that? Well, the thing is, I've always been a huge, huge NBA fan. My entire life, I wanted to be in the NBA. But newsflash, I realized I was white, skinny, and Jewish, and had zero <laughs> athletic ability whatsoever. So the next closest thing was, I'm going to sell jewelry to the NBA players. So I would go out every night, go to the clubs, go to uh, charity events. I would literally tap guys on the shoulder and say, I want to design you jewelry. I didn't know how the fuck to make any jewelry, mm. by the way. Zero, no idea. Mm. And I would ask guys constantly, 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 and everyone brushed me off. But guess what? Anthony Davis, I, I mean Anthony Davis, Anthony Mason, I asked him maybe six times, and I caught him on a good drunk night. Mm -hmm. On a good drunk good night, he drunk said, you know night. what? Come to my uh, room tomorrow. I'm staying at the Ritz Marina. We're, pl we're playing the Knicks, the Lakers. Come to my room and show me all your bracelets. I went to his room the very next day. Mind you, I'm not a jeweler. I don't know anything about jewelry. I just knew how to draw. So I was like, I can draw something for him. I went home. I cut out. I went on the internet. I, I printed out pictures of bracelets. I went through mag jewelry magazines, cut out pictures, made a fifth grade level makeshift catalog, went to his room. He opened the door. He said, where's all your jewelry? I said, no, no. I, everything I do is bespoke. Like Everything's custom made. So I went. He looked through it. He picked the bracelet. He said, how much is that? I said, shit, I don't know how much I'm going to charge. 40000 he said, okay, done. I, I want it. I said, give me a $20,000 deposit. He gave me a check, and I, had to, I was in the business. Wow. I had to go find wow. somebody to make it for me. I found someone, made my quick $2,000. I was officially in business, and then he started referring me to other guys in the league, but none of this would have started without Anthony Mason giving me a shot. So wow. you don't have to That's be tough. good. You got to be That's lucky, fire. too. Yeah. And I was lucky. That's, that, that is not luck. That's, How is that not That's, luck? Persistent. That's intelligent. Yeah. That's That's that is That's not luck. Yeah. Luck means you're just sitting in here and like, it just happened. You, you just said you t it took you six times. It took me six times. Okay, so that's persistence. So yeah. hustle, you hustle. That's, that's yeah, hustle yeah. for that. So, a, we so your profit was 2000 It was $2,423. I still remember to this day. Mm. Dang. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. That's hard. That's tough. That's can, they, that's can, they, can they try to ring Absolutely. One? Okay. So this is the Warriors ring actually opens up and oh, you wow. can see how many trophies that particular player won. So oh, wow. Steph has four, but you know, Otto Porter had one. Okay. Got it. Right. Oh, oh wow. so it's for that player? For that particular player. That's dope. This is oh, Milwaukee I, I Bucks. This is a Milwaukee Bucks ring, which Brandon had a big part of, where the top actually comes off and you can turn it into a pendant mm -hmm. and put a chain through it. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, should have came that. Dumb. Yeah, you know, you know how I get. <laughs> you know how I get for the boys at 414. <laughs> <laughs> and clicks right back in. You know you're not getting these rings back, right? It's okay, I can yeah, run yeah. fast. Hey, sure. <laughs> yeah. Man, that's, that's, that's hard. And so now you look at this ring. This is a oh 2009 Lord. Lakers ring. First team to actually give me a shot. Look how small the rings are compared to now. Yeah. Wow. Like, this is itty bitty. Like, this is like the yeah, same ring Kobe had. Yeah. Yeah. Club, nigga. Hey, this nigga got little fingers. Well, yeah. Long <laughs> Damn! <laughs> get, get, yeah. get your finger weight up. For sure. No, that's, that's tough. Fire. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got a that that open Ooh. that that's crazy though. Yeah. yeah, how it opens? No, it opens and it shows exactly how many rings you actually, or how many trophies you actually. Want. Oh, that's cool. Thank you, Jack. All right, for sure. Hey, show the camera. And how much? And how much? Hey, show the camera. Show the camera that one. And last question I got for you. Oh, Obviously, I'm, I'm sure some teams are breaking bigger bags than others, but how, how much on average are teams spending on right. championship rings? So it really depends, right? It depends on ownership and how much they're willing to spend and how much they're, how, how much they're trying to satisfy the players. Because at the end of the day, this is something the players want. They want to make the players happy. How many unrestricted, how many restricted free agents do they have? They got, they got to make sure they're taking care of guys. It goes a long way. So teams typically will spend anywhere from $3 million upwards of $20 million uh, on a ring program. Damn! Jeez. Shit, you better off just tricking that one off, saving that 20, pulling the starters. Yeah. <laughs> we good, so we made it this people, far. Hey, start cutting people right before the games. <laughs> like, you know you're not coming. Cut, 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 go. Go. So this is this, this one of the Kobe's rings. He got yeah, that was the, yeah. the 09. 09, 09 yep. 10. Man. So we've seen the rings from the past. Let's start looking ahead to the rings for the future. We know the Nuggets are in the finals. He's Celtics. 
game five tonight. After missing the opportunity to sweep, the Celtics at home, the Heat head back to Boston for game five, as we already mentioned. Gabe Vincent is out good. We don't familiarize yourself with this game. <laughs> I know it is. I took the under last time and had 19. <laughs> so I'm saying, Heater 18 and 5 this postseason with Vincent in the starting lineup. They already, you know, injuries already depleted them a little bit. But the good news for them is the, the Celtics are 10 and 11 at home in the last two postseasons, which is the most losses by any team in a two season span in NBA history in the playoffs. So, Gil, I'll start with you. How should the Heat approach game five in Boston? I mean, the same way they've they've been approaching it. Um, I mean, they've been dominant the whole playoffs. Um, they have a formula, and that formula's worked. So there's nothing for them to change. You know, they're the team that um, that's in the lead right now. So, you know, from them is just making shots, playing defense. You know, if you have an open, open shot, make it. If we have a chance to win it at the end, we have Jimmy Butler. So, you know, I don't, I don't see their game plan changing any. I think the pressure's on. Um, going back to Boston for game five, I mean, I got Boston taking this, and then that's when it's going to get very – it's going to look different in game six because if that ball starts getting heavy, feeling like a brick, and, you know, you know how it just gets. It, it just – things just turn. So these next – I mean, well, this one tonight, I feel like they're going to lose. And then game six, man, that's up in the air because if it gets back to game seven in Boston, good luck. We got Rashad, our, our, our lifelong Heat fan for the last week. <laughs> what you think? <laughs> I think uh, I'm going to piggyback on what Gil said. They don't change nothing, right? Um, I think that Boston was supposed to do what they were supposed to do, which is fight for their lives. But if Miami plays the same type of game, you're going to have some let up from somebody on the other side. You know, uh, Tatum willed them, mm -hmm. you know, in the end. But at the end of the day, he's starting to gas out to me because he's, he's trying to do so much to prove that he's the guy for the team. And um, I just think Miami just, they just sail. They sail through it, keep doing what you're doing. Like you said, depend on Jimmy in the end if you need it. But I think it's going to be some X factors to show up for Miami. d right, what you think? Uh, I think it's going to be a tough one. I, I kind of got Boston getting this one tonight, and then Miami finishing it in game six. Uh, one thing I know is Jimmy Butler had two not his you know caliber games the last two games, so I see him these next two games being dominant. Uh, and I watched Boston lose to the Warriors last year, and I feel like, just like you mentioned, they run out of gas. You know, they just, I think Jason Tatum needs to simplify his game a little bit more. I think he does a little too much with the basketball. Uh, so I, I, I got Miami winning in the six. I, I have Boston winning the whole thing. Ooh. You have to remember, Boston shoot is, in the post has been shooting 40% at home from the three-point line. They're going to continue that trend. I think Jalen Brown's realized that he needs to be a little bit more of a facilitator and that the ball was sticking too much. I do agree that Jason Tatum is, is looking a little gassed. The man is 20, 26, 27 years old. He, he'll get it together. They're going to win tonight. They've already proven to themselves they can win in Miami. They're going to go back to Miami. They're going to win mm. because cream rises to the top. Mm. Great coaching is important. Great talent's even more important. Yeah. And at the end of the day, that roster on Boston has better talent, and better talent's going to win. Game seven, Boston guaranteed. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> beating the heat. I mean, beating the heat four times. Jesus, that's be tough. tough. That's, that's tough. Hard. Sounds delusional, though. Yeah. I mean, that's how. I mean, I mean, beating Jimmy four times. Yeah. No way. No way. No how. Confidence. Like I, I don't. I, I mean, that, like I got them winning this game. Game six, trying to get that goddamn win mm -hmm. in oh. Miami against Jimmy Butler. You're gonna have to play both Jalen and Tatum. Has to be in the 30s. Yeah. Gil, you're the same person that just sat over here talking about hot garbage. They hot garbage. <laughs> but hot, they got hot for garbage. They got hot garbage. Talk about it. They got hot garbage. Talk about it. Jason. <laughs> Talk about it. <laughs> he, wait, wait, wait. Hold Talk on. about it. Hot garbage. Yeah, he said he your saying. team, but he's saying your team is getting beat. Yeah, I said, but he so gonna have to dinner. talk about it. Hot garbage. We know. Look, they not gonna do the seven. It's it's, it's Miami and five. So, but just the confidence he has in Boston. Yes, the confidence. It's the, he he has confidence, but. We know. I just said delusion. It's a delusion. So you're both delusional. No, I. <laughs> you just said, look, four game what? To win what? Three games straight. I said beating beating Jimmy Butler three yeah, three four, four games in a row. That's gonna be hard. 
If they can get it back to Boston, if they can get it back to Boston, if they can get it back to Boston, you still Ooh. gotta face Jimmy on a on a on a um. Whew. Just a reminder: on Bucks a lost this year, but Bucks swept, swept Jimmy in the Heat in that 2021 title run. Just just a reminder. Just on and out. Okay. Somebody thought. It. Hey man, it don't matter. Listen, it don't matter. <laughs> they don't got y'all. It don't matter because whatever happens, if it goes to a game seven and Boston win, the 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 energy they had to use. Get them swept. Get them swept. Get them swept. Get them swept. Get them swept in Denver. Yeah, back. D- Denver sitting back, back relaxing. Right. Right. Yeah, they laughing. Chilling. They chilling. I'm pretty right. sure they already <laughs> called you. I'm pretty sure you are <laughs> working on it. We're going to put some mountains over here. We're going to put a little snow. We're going to put a little snow flake. You already called them. You already called them, right? We're going to put snow flakes going on the ground. That's hilarious. Twist it open. It's LeBron's foot. Damn. Got his foot pop out. This nigga foot rise up out the middle of the city. Taco Bell over here in the side from when Joker was drafted. But um, so let's talk a little bit about Jimmy Butler. Uh, he's been going hard with the trash talk. He, he was talking big shit. Heat's first three wins when they went up 3 0, doing the Al Horford timeout celebration. It feels like this is an era where NBA players really don't be going at each other like that. So is Jimmy Butler bringing smoke back what the NBA's been missing? Bringing it back? Getting yeah, in the Grant's you know, grill, you know what I mean? Like Grant Williams' grill. Yeah. No, that was Grant Williams' fault. Yeah, he started that. That was Grant Williams' fault. He should have never did that. <laughs> I guess that he brought. I mean, we we've seen Memphis troll. Yeah, yeah. We've seen Draymond Green. Yeah, we. I mean, it, you have players that that troll each other. You have players that talk trash. Embiid all season. Yes. Um, but is it beef though? Like no, there's no beef. It used no, to be beef. It used to be real beef. Beef, beef, though, beef with a real hooper though. It used to be real beef. Like Jimmy hooping though. Like we ain't never seen the hoopers go back and forth and beefing. But who's he going? Who's going back at Jimmy? No one. Nobody. Nobody. Yeah. Yeah, so it's always, know, one, it's always it's one. It's always it's always one side, but it's someone has to wake up. Where they they had like personal vendettas against yeah. each other. If they saw each other in the hotel lobby, yeah, they wouldn't like, dab yeah, each other up. Yeah. they did not fuck with each other back then. Right. Now they might battle on the court, but I guarantee you, after the game, they're hanging out, they're Ryan talking, they're this, they're yeah, going to have dinner Wins together. Yeah, I don't how like many, that. How many times have well, I been? I don't like that. Yeah, the eighties like is your favorite era, right? That's the worst. The eighties, the highest level. The highest level. Because if we don't like each other on the court, I'm definitely not going to like you outside of it. Right. Like, that's I, just what I, it is. I, I, I'm not going to. It, it all depends. It's hard. It's harder now because just like somebody like Westbrook, right? His biggest enemy was who? Dame and Patrick Beverly. Patrick For sure. Yep. They play together. Mm-hmm. Do you see how that just fucks up right. a real, real rivalry? Mm-hmm. And then we start finding out that Westbrook and him really, it was beef, but there was still some type of respect, like, yeah. yo, your sister need tickets. He didn't tell Patrick Beverly he was going to do it. Put his, his sister, you know, first uh, front row. Probably put it front row so you can see I'm about to bust his ass. <laughs> we don't know what that was. But, you know, it's still like part of the, the, the sorority. I don't right? know. Me so, and Patrick, if I'm Russell Westbrook, I would never get along with Patrick Beverly. After what he did, like when he bumped his knee, he yeah. got hurt. Like, like that stopped him from missing all, all the games. Remember, he had like he was going on a run of like mad oh, games being played. What, that's what started that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, that, yeah, wasn't, but that wasn't on purpose, was it? Uh, yeah, but I'm saying, that's bro, what knee, you know, I'm everyone was saying it was you trying to steal the ball. I caught a timeout. You still playing, and then my knee, and then now I'm missing games. Like this is the first time I ever missed a game. Yeah, I would never fuck with him. But I think that made Russ even more explosive too when he came back yeah. after that. Still, was, uh, yeah, but I feel what you're saying. Still, I mean, we could be on a team with Lakers. I ain't fucking with you. Sister ain't getting tickets. None of that. How far? Hey, bro, I'm still. Still mad at the fact that you cut off my consistent play. Right. How far <laughs> do we take it though when it comes down to like not liking a nigga on, oh, it's on just, your it, team? How it's, far? Like if I'm hooping, not fighting. It's just like more for like, me. I don't. I don't fuck with you. I like to trigger niggas, right? So I was. I like to see how far I can take it before you go off. When we step off the floor, if you still on that energy I brought to you, like you not built like that to be competing against me because I'm keeping the shit on the floor, right? This is I. I'm a heckler. I'm, I'm like, the, I like to just see what your temperature is. And then it's like, we can't go get some food or nothing like that. Like, you was never a real competitor. Like, because if you keeping it on the floor, it's like, it's good vibes off the floor because, my nigga, you compete. Yeah, I fuck with you because you compete. But if you want something like, all right, man, you don't fuck with me because I blocked your shot three times. You don't want to, I, I don't get no steak. I don't get no steak because I was going to block the shot three times, my nigga. Like, what's up? You on that? I mean, it's just the same thing like what, what Gil said about KG trying to get your, his jersey retired. Yeah. He wasn't fucking with none of y'all. Yeah, no, like, no, You know what I'm saying? Like, so some people just take it, it's they that it serious. For, right. But 
from a fan perspective, we want to see that. Yeah. We want to see the players not like each other. Because right. I'm a Laker fan, and I don't want, and I'm a Magic Johnson fan. I don't want to like Larry Bird. Yeah, yeah, right? Like yeah. we, as a fan, we want that. We want to see that you guys don't fuck with each other off the court. Right. Like because fans we want to worse than players. You know, yeah. Yeah. Like Lakers fans are worse. Fans fucking hate each other, Man. and nothing. Right. Will, yeah. I love it though. I love it though. I that was up for sports. That was the Duke Huffle. Carolina thing too. Yep. Like, they felt like we genuinely didn't like the player, so they took it upon themselves to fucking hate the Duke fans. Yeah. Like that's what it came from us. Were y'all fucking with the players though? Behind, like I said, behind yeah. the scenes, we, the we crib, never had no yeah. animosity. Because there's a respect for each but other. But when that fucking climate came, that date hit, and it's like Duke Carolina. This date, everybody like, yeah, fuck Duke, mm -hmm. fuck everybody. Fuck Duke, but you know we might be seen at the club. Yeah. Me and Sean Dockery <laughs> chilling. Yeah. Ooh, 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 you know what I'm saying? AAU basketball has messed everything up. AAU, everybody's the jumping, everybody's we, jumping, yeah. team teaming up. Yeah, everybody's going to USA camp this yep. weekend. Your mm. kid is gonna be oh, hanging you're, you're, out with the New York guy. <laughs> yeah. You know, we're supposed to not like the New York dude, but then we get to the lead. That's why you see guys teaming up because they build that. Yep. That friendship in high school, middle school. So now we all I'm about cool. to say, hey, you, it was beef. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Real yeah. beef. But we ain't fuck with none of them. Watch out. But that's what that's what it is. In AAU, everybody had their little team. Yeah, and look, we, they click. Now, everybody if I don't like this team, I'm hey, can I come with y'all team? Y'all got nah. a roster spot? Cool. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we here, we playing Oakland. Soldiers, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Most LA kids didn't play no Oakland Soldiers. Nah, oh, man. Nah. Like, I was like, LeBron played for the Oakland. How do you get the fucking Oakland Soldiers? <laughs> I played for the Oakland Soldiers. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. But, uh, uh, one tournament. But, I played for but, yeah, but, but that's what I'm saying. But so yeah. what ends up happening is you end up going to these different teams, meeting players. You yeah. guys are yeah. connecting, like, hey, yo, hey, like, you really happy here? <laughs> oh, now, yeah. no, the LA yeah. team. Right. You know, so you're creating more friendships now that's mm -hmm. coming to the NBA that's now. Now, but it makes it easier for the people who, who run these teams now. Yep. But it, I like the EYBL and all these leagues. You see these dudes now every week. Back in our day, it was local, regional. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. You formed Inglewood Wire. We formed our AAU team from there. Like, that was our crew. National. And we didn't know New York niggas. We didn't know dudes from Atlanta. We didn't know the Atlanta Celtics, all these other squads. Right. But now these dudes all know each other so well that naturally you're going you're gonna to rock and vibe with some people. If y'all respect each other as Hoopers, whatever it may be, y'all going to form that bond a lot easier. Like, yep. you know, we did like West Coast All-Star Camp. Mm -hmm. We didn't have dudes coming from all from over. East Coast? Yeah, no, yeah. It was like, not, uh, but it was the rankings, though, that helped us form yeah, sure. our animosity towards the yeah, other side. Sure. It was like, yo, how is you rank ahead of me? You rank ahead of me? Who? Huh? I was at Oak Hill. Who? But, but oh, we, he under me? Oh, he kind of catch me. But, my, I'm, I'm, I, but now my. you can see it. Back then, we didn't see, we see names. Yeah, you didn't see who they were. You didn't see You just made them in your head, like, okay. You just hold a whole nigga, like... DeMar Johnson, these, oh, I can't wait to see. Now you see 6'9", six, 6'10", six, coming down, uh, uh, ducking. Uh, uh. Like, I ain't going to catch him. Who's oh, next? <laughs> <laughs> Who's next? All right, all right. Steve, yeah. right? <laughs> now, I can beat him. Yeah. I'm going to get him. DeMar. Carlos Boozer, who the hell is Carlos Boozer? Got a big Alaskan dude coming down, yeah. breaking around. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to catch him. Hey, yeah. oh, you know them two players y'all said? Nah, they real. They 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 deserve it. They, 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 they deserve it. <laughs> they deserve That's yeah. four and five right yeah. there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Crazy. <laughs> Let's talk about this. The Heat think they have the best player in the playoffs in Jimmy Butler. Some people on that couch, this couch might agree. Nuggets think they have the best playoff in the player, or best player in the playoffs in Joker. Who's right? <laughs> drug, drug test time? Who got the cup? You don't have to ask. Come on, man. Who, who, you said, what's the question? Is which team feels that they got the better player? So uh, both teams feel that they got the He feel like they got the best player in the playoffs in Jimmy Butler. Nuggets feel like they got the best player in the playoffs in Joker. I'm going with Jimmy because he got to do more. Jimmy got to do way more. <laughs> as far as the best, though, like, what, what do we? I mean, like, the stats like don't a, show that Jimmy does more. Right? I, got I mean, go right? Record. Like, if you look Joker. at the stats. Okay, so, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm conflicted because... I, know, okay, okay. I already know you work no, on no, me. I'm conflicted because, obviously, Denver knows they have the best player, yeah. okay, in Jokic, right? The triple-double guy. But I can see why he thinks they have the best player because that garbage they got... That's what I'm saying. <laughs> and, they got, and Jimmy Butler has them where they are. Yeah. So I can see why. So right now I, I got my hands tied because it's an argument on both sides. Like your point if you I'm made a about fan, game. If I'm a Heat fan, I'm sitting there like, hey, wait, wait, hold on, Jokic. You got Jokic, you got Mary, you got all these guys. Right. We got hot garbage over this motherfucker right here, and Jimmy got us here. So 
I can see that argument, so I'm out. Miami has the best player for that team. Like, that, that's what I think. I think that Jimmy Butler is the best player for that t- particular team. That's what they needed. They needed that dog. He gets after it. He makes other people better. All the other, other guys, they're hitting open jump shots that they didn't hit in the regular season. I'm going with Jimmy. I'm, 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 I'm big on Orr, the swag, coming in with the coffee, short shorts, John yeah. Cletas, the thong in the middle. Like, <laughs> you know, just, just coming in there like, yo, John you know what? Cletas. Let me just go play this game and get back to what I'm doing. It's just the swag. It's the swag. Really. Rashad, who are you? You're a Miami Heat fan, uh, right? He's about, go, like, he about to go Denver. Oh, my God. You can see he's about to say, yo, kids, brother. Don't you do it. They, they watching. They watching. These people are watching. These people are watching. You better say Jimmy still. <laughs> why you, why you, you better, fucking with me, Because you know? I, I see why you fucking I with me? seen it in your body language <laughs> that you was ready to switch it. <laughs> I'm rolling with Brandon. I'm going to roll with Brandon. I ain't even going to give you the fucking time of day today. Don't, don't do it. I'm don't not. Do it. I'm don't not. Do it. I'm don't not. Do it. Don't, you know, do, it. don't not. do it. Don't do it. Uh, yeah. Jimmy, man, you got to confidence coffee, man. Confidence coffee. And I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to speak from skill set from here. I'm, I'm going to speak strictly from confidence, what he brings, swag, all the things you just said. Like, that's what's setting Jimmy apart from the playoffs. Not just the team. Not just the best guy on this team, but what he's brought to the playoffs. He's injected what you should see from every player who don't think that their team may not be good enough. Mm -hmm. This is the type of energy you got to bring to the playoffs. Like, all right, regular season, you got here. But now we're in the play-in. You got to have the confidence to say, fuck this play-in. We going to the finals. And that's what I like about Jimmy. I love everything y'all said about Jimmy, but I'm going to go with Jokic. Just because he his ability to make everybody around him feel good. Mm-hmm. Like when you're a superstar and you can make the the ninth or tenth like a Bruce Brown, he make him feel good. Oh, yeah. Like he can't he can do anything. So his ability to pass and play make and you know the scoring is out, uh, you know out the roof. So I'm gonna have to go with with Jokic. It's, it's that it's, it reminds me of the the Jordan Lebron argument right now, right? Like <laughs> we know that's just been waging for like that's just we Monday. know we know Jordan's greatness, right? Mm-hmm. We understand that you know. You got your six rings. You know, we, we're going to pretend that those are the only six, you know, seasons you played, like every other Jordan fan. We're not going to remember 84 to 90. We're not going to, we're going to pretend that those didn't even exist, right? Um, so we can see, like, Jokic, right? MVP, right? We get it. But then on the other end, you know, LeBron's argument, same with Jimmy's. Look at the, look at the team I have. All right. Right? You're not going to count my greatness of getting us to the championship? Yeah, you say I got swept. Yeah, I was there at 22. And look who I had at 22 playing against this dynasty, right? I don't get no credit for getting us there at 20. So I, I can see where Miami gets to really say, listen, Kevin Love is a starter, plays five minutes, right? <laughs> right? You know, and then, and then I got a whole bunch of other players, right? That's, man, I don't, uh, you know? <laughs> like, I, like you start looking like, uh, I don't have no Murray with me. Right. I don't even have a Gordon. Mm-hmm. I, I don't. I don't have a uh, a KCP on this team. Right. I don't have uh, Michael Porter Jr. on this team, and you know I, I got us in the same spot. So I, I get it because if I'm Jimmy and I'm looking at Jokic, I'm like, yo, y'all, look who y'all got. I love you, it. Yeah, MV, I love but back to back MVP. Now, I'm not a back to back MVP. I'm not even. I don't even know if I was all NBA team, right? But we're in the same spot. We're fighting for the same thing, and you know maybe in you know a couple of days I'm gonna be exactly where you are. Am I going to win? Probably not, but I'm going to fight you to the end so I can see where, where they say they have the best push. Sure. Is playoff Jimmy the ultimate eye test dude when you're just watching him out there and what he's doing on the court? It's not like a quantifiable stat. Obviously, he's getting buckets, doing things, but. He's the hard, listen, um, like I'm telling you, like if I'm game planning for Jimmy Butler, I am not paying attention to Jimmy regular season performance. Right, I'm going all playoffs. Like everything he does in the playoffs is where I'm going to put my playbook against him. What's end up happening is he is literally the definition of turning it off and turning it on. Yeah. Like we we can say he can sit there and say, yeah, I don't turn it up on a playoff. Yeah, you do. It's a whole. This is a it's whole a different, different man. Yeah. Like the stats might not show it. The demeanor. Yep. 
Yep. Their demeanor is different. The like, horror. if he averaged 22 in the regular season and then 22 in the play, it's a whole different type of 22. It's a different 22. Wow, 22. It's, yeah, it's, it's a very powerful 22 <laughs> versus the regular season. I so. think that's a good statement because if you actually look at the stats, his stats don't jump off the board, particularly mm -hmm. leading up to this playoffs. You look at J playoff Jimmy stats versus regular season Jim Jimmy stats, they're not that different. No, they really not. aren't. So it's like that extra attitude, that extra swag he brings to the team during the playoffs that makes all the difference. It's, it's something, like I said, when you're looking at the stats and you're like, what makes him better? I don't, you just got to watch it. Right. It's Jimmy you just got to watch That's it. That's it. It's just different. No. That's it. it. Like, it's 22. This 22 might be in the, 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 the third quarter, the first through three. This 22 is like in the fourth quarter. Yeah. So it's the same 22, but it's when it's happening. So it's one of those things where... You know, it's you have to be a real hooper to really understand that this is a different man, and he might not go down as top 100. Yeah. But when you ask players, okay. they're like, "Nah, that you know Jimmy Butler is a whole different dude." Yeah. That's is, the point when, there. Is that, Jimmy Butler the most feared in the playoffs? In the playoffs, most feared player in the besides playoffs? besides Giannis. I'm just saying, like, is he like Giannis, top? Is he top, top three? Five, yes, Giannis, Steph, Jimmy, KD. Nah, Bron up there. Bro, Bron in the playoffs. Jimmy, I mean, um, uh, Booker. Playing Booker, against Booker, in, the Booker in the playoffs. Like, in the yeah. playoffs. But I'm but, talking about but, fear, like, as if, like, yo, this motherfucker going to yeah. be, like, yeah. just, this, this is the series where it's just like, God ah, damn. No, 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 no. Like, he's top five most fear. Like, he's top five feared in the playoffs. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Like, it's like when Kawhi was in the playoffs, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Like, Kawhi, like, the only reason he don't fear him because he might miss some games. Yeah. Right, but if as long as he's healthy, you be like, ah, oh, it's a problem. It's yeah, about yeah. to be a problem tonight, right? You know, he's okay. he's he's top five yeah. for sure. I agree. So, Dr, I want to talk to you. You, you won a chip, a chip with the Heat in twenty uh, two thousand six. What makes that franchise so special? When obviously when LeBron was there, obviously you got Shaq and D Wade. Then you had the LeBron area, the Heatles, and all that. But now we're looking at this squad. You know, potential to reach their second finals since twenty twenty without those big marquee names. Yeah. Like what makes this franchise so special and just the, the winning mindset and attitude they have? Culture, number one, culture. And I know that's so cliche now. Everybody's screaming culture, but, uh, you know, what Pat Riley brought to Miami and, you know, Mickey Arison and Nick Arison giving him the ability to, you know, create these good teams and get these undrafted guys and people we don't know uh, is because, you know, the first thing they're looking at is work ethic and then they're looking at IQ. So they feel like if you got any type of skill, they could polish that. So that's why you see these guys that you never heard of, you know, be successful in their system. So um, I really feel, feel, you know, the accountability, you know, from Eric Spolcher, you know, from Pat Riley is one person you don't answer to, and that's OG Pat, and everybody know that. So I think, you know, just the culture that he's built and, you know, the respect that Spolcher gets from his players. You know, a lot of people like to laugh at my guy, o OG UD. He's there for a reason, you know, to keep everything in line and show them the culture. So I just feel like how they install those type of guys like a UD is the reason why they're so successful. And then besides accountability, like what are the, what are the cornerstones of that culture? Like what makes it, what makes that whole machine to We're going to work. We're going to work. We're going to be the we're going to be the nastiest team. We're going to be outwork you. We're going to be the most in shape team. Uh, Jason brought up the weight and body fat. That was every week. Uh, guards had to be six and under. Wings had to be eight and under. Bigs had to be 10 and under. And, you know, they hold you accountable to that. If you're not at that number, you're going to be in the weight room doing 20 minutes of work. That's what they say. You got 20 minutes of work since you can't meet those numbers. <laughs> or, you know, the year I was there with Twan, James Posey, they find guys. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Because they couldn't meet their body fat. So. <laughs> I was about to say, man, what, wait, wait a minute. What about Gary Payton and that group that was the strip Shaq, club key? Oh, oh, man. Uh, that strip yeah. club group. Like, yeah. they, I'm pretty sure they wasn't meeting that requirement. Shoot, it that was. boy was going straight to the steam room right after that. It was, bro. You know what I mean? Like, they held everybody accountable. And it used to be hilarious because Shaq, you know, he always had something to say. He's like, man, I bust y'all ass. Skinny Shaq, medium Shaq, and fat Shaq. His body fat's some bullshit. <laughs> but he bought into it. He knew that was going to make us yeah. successful. So, And Pat Riley never backed down to nobody. He was like, this is what it is. And if you can't, you know, meet our criteria or what we ask for, you go find somewhere else. I know. I've had I respect that. I respect that. that. Mm. And that's, that's that. man, that's, so when you talk about, like, the, the, the John Morant's getting in trouble yep. or someone's out of shape or someone like Embiid. Like, I think if Embiid was in Miami. Oh, man. If Embiid was in Miami, mm -hmm. this would be a 
Total different. Whole nother animal. For sure. For right? Sure. It'd be a whole nother animal because what makes him slip fourth quarter, he's not in shape, that's what they're going to make sure you, you're, you're never going to get out of shape. You're never going to be out of shape. Ever. Mm-hmm. You're going to be, shit, 10% body fat. Right. You're going to be the best player the game is going to see, and they're going to try to tap into that. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's, this is, and I, and I tell, I tell, like, when I be making comments about ownership, right, treat your, 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 your teams like Google would. Right when they do all this, oh, I got a million dollars. Anybody who can hack our system, yeah. the reason they're doing that is they want to see what new hackers are out there, so they can add them to their team to exactly. make their program. But same thing, add pieces to your organization that entices greatness. Mm-hmm. Right, you can't look and expect a 23 year old, a 21 year old, a 20 to know what greatness is. You have to provide that. Yeah. You have to build a culture. When they come into this culture. They understand it. Mm-hmm. We can see why everyone's great over there. Yeah. And everything is about numbers with those guys. That's what Pat said. Everything is a number. If you're at that number, if you're 8% body fat, your chances of being successful is this. So, like, the analytics and all that stuff, I've been knowing about this since, you know, 04 mm-hmm. when I got drafted. So, and they stand on that. I love uh, the Miami Heat culture as it stands, giving guys chances. Mm, yep. Right? And they've done that since the 06. The 06 was a time where they did give some older players the opportunity to come down here, play with Shaq. Shaq just got here. Mm-hmm. We got to build around him so, now, yep. right? It was three guys, yeah. D-Wade, Lonzo, Shaq. Mm-hmm. Now they got to bring in pieces. Let's take a chance on GP. Let's take a chance on Posey, blah, blah, blah. Jay Will. Jay Will. Mm-hmm. So you get after that 06 team, you look at it and you say, well, we got to rebuild now. That's when D-Wade went for the 30th game. Yep, and he exactly. had just by him by himself. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, we can still get it out the mud, right? We can still formulate guys who just want to get it, yep. stay grit and grind. Then they get LeBron, mm-hmm. right? They, they get lucky. They get they, they get their run for two, three years. Now they got to do it again yep. with the same coach. So he brings the culture just like Pop did with a system yeah. that it's like when you come here, I don't give a fuck how good you are. This is our system, yeah. mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So then you inject players who don't get opportunities, uh, undrafted players, second rounders that are like, they don't want, they don't think you can play. Real talk. But you gonna, we're gonna put you in the in the practice gym. We're gonna fucking train you to death, and we're gonna get you in shape, and you're gonna be the best version of you. Now we're in the conference finals. Right. I gotta salute an organization like that. For sure. You, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And you didn't play with LeBron, but you know, if you could just know what you know about that Heat culture, that Heat franchise, how beneficial was that to LeBron in his career? It's the first place he won championships. Mm-hmm. But it seems, you know, LeBron's a hard worker, but it seems now you gotta come into that Pat Riley regime. Yeah. It'll take your shit to a whole other level that'll impact you for the rest of your career. Yeah, I think what LeBron, I'm pretty sure what he holds his hat on today is the things he learned in Miami. You know, uh, we talked about those guys like Udonis Haslam. That was D Wade, you know, show him in a way. Because mm-hmm. I remember a lot of vets coming in and being like, yo, young fellas ain't the real NBA. And I didn't know, I was green. I'm like, this is structure, you know, I gotta be on time, or I'm fine. So I think with LeBron going there, he learned how to win, he learned how to carry himself on and off the court, mm-hmm. um, and he learned how to work, yeah. you know, real work, you know, mm-hmm. preparing. That's one thing about Spolster and those guys, they're gonna prepare you like crazy. For each player, you're gonna know everybody from A to Z. And uh, another thing with their coaches, all those guys are heat people. Those guys started in the video room and they're working their stuff up. All those guys on the, on the bench, the Karans, Malik Allen, uh, uh, Carter, those, all, those are players. Chris Quinn started, you know. All, so, the, all, the, all it, the mind. Yeah, those That's are smart. all guys that have been there and know what it takes. So I think that's what a peace of mind that LeBron took from there. I'm going to be real. I imagine it's hard, you know, once you get to Miami to want to leave. I could I could do this for a Man, long time. I was time. sick. Yeah. You know? I, I thought I was going to be there my whole career. <laughs> <laughs> like, Damn. like, it prepares you. Like, I'm surprised that a lot of Heat assistants haven't been getting those opportunities yeah. as coaches. Yeah, true. Because, you know, their regular season is like playoffs to them. Yeah, Fizz is probably the only one. Mm. We seen Chris Quinn name come up. I think um, I forget what job it was, but his name came up. But yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I want to see more of those guys. The opportunities like the Spurs yep. guys. It's the same. It's the two same same system. thing. Yeah, same same thing. thing. And last mm-hmm. question I got for you: Talk about the pressure, the hard work, all that stuff. Did you ever see any guys crumble in that situation? Oh yeah. <laughs> you yeah. don't got to name no names, but yeah. 
Is there any stories in particular you can remember of a player just not being able to hand, have to ring that bell and tap out? Listen, man, it was a guy that was on a highlight that we watched uh, in the beginning. <laughs> he seen me in, uh, in L.A. He was like, yo, I'm thinking about signing in Miami. I knew what type of person this dude was. I was like, don't sign. <laughs> I'm like, bro, it's, it's different. He's like, you think so? This is, but it's Miami. I say it's Miami, but it's not Miami. Yeah. And they sent his butt home like in the first two months. What that mean is Miami, but it's not Miami. You think Miami, you see <laughs> yeah. South Beach and all that? No, nah, no, nah. you're going to be too tired to do that. You're going to be, you know, you're going to be taking a nap after practice. Yeah, no. Yeah, serious. real talk. But that's so. the information, like, for the show, like, we give Jews, right? Yep. So a lot of the guys, the, the people who watch, they don't know who we are. They don't mm -hmm. know the grind, right? You right. came out of high school. Yeah. Right? So, like, the, the thing you had to prepare for and then you got to Miami, yep. like, Talk to them about like that part, like what the expectation was and you coming out at that time, what that looked like. Um, I think the biggest thing is, you know, me coming out of high school, being this great high school player and thinking I'm going straight in, I'm going to play, it's going to be the same like high school. And it's like, no, no, you got to wait. I'm like, what you mean? So I'm in there with Keith Atkins doing three workouts a day. Practice at 10. I got to be on a court taping ready at 830. Mm. So I go all the way, hour and a half to practice practice hard, then it's like, young fella, come get some more shots up, all right, now go to the weight room. Mm. So it was consistent every single day like that. And at the time, being an 18-year-old kid in the league, you think you're on punishment. Like, this ain't the NBA. I thought it was about to be sweet. And, you know, I used to ask so many questions, like, why am I not playing? It's like, you were drafted off potential. You're not ready. Wow. So that's kind of what it was, a real grind. And it breaks you down mentally, but they also building you up. So that mental toughness you know, was a mother when I left because it's like, if I went through that, I could go anywhere else in the, in the NBA and be successful. And the number one thing, when I went to different teams, you want to know what the coaches has always had me do? Okay, you talk about that Miami Heat culture. <laughs> you tell the guys like what you had to go through. So I was always explaining to my teammates, you know, this is what it takes to be a champion. This is what it takes to be successful. You got to work every single day, snow days off. So that was something that was, that was dope that I was able to take with me. See, people don't understand, you said it when they told you, we drafted you off potential. Yes. You're not good right now. Mm -hmm. We think you're going to be here. Exactly. You're here. Mm -hmm. We think you're going to be here, so we're, gonna, we're drafting you, whatever pick we're going to draft you with, to build you to be the best. And we think if you can get to this level, you are going to be. Exactly. And I don't think people really understand that when they say, oh, you're, you're the number one pick, the number two pick, the number five pick. You had to be the best player in the draft. No. No. No, that's not how that works. He wasn't the best player in the draft, but at this age versus this person's age, mm -hmm. oh yeah, you're gonna you're at 18 versus this 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 guy at 18. 18, he was in high school. He had to go to college, so you are in front of him. If we can build you up by the time you turn 21, yeah. you too, you will be here. Exactly, and that's what the potential yeah. means. And you know, like Miami, like I I really get it. Like this is South Beach. Everyone want to be in South right. Beach, yeah. but. This job right here? <laughs> oh no! Nah. Nah. By the time you get out of this, brother, you don't got no time. You don't know what that going there. Like. Yeah, you don't know what that Miami <laughs> right. looks like. You got to wait for the summer for that. Real talk. And I think that's the reason Pat Riley is the way he is. Yeah. Because he understands he's battling an element that this city can consume. Mm -hmm. My investment. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Eat you up. And I'm not going <laughs> to allow my investment to be consumed by a city that doesn't sleep. Man. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put in a structure mm -hmm. where when they, when they when they mm -hmm. leave here, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. they think about 10 yeah, o'clock, right. yeah. the club yeah. about to start yeah. at 1 o'clock, mm -hmm. them kids know they got to be here taped and ready at 8.30. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're they, they going to try it one time, then they're going to realize we're going to beat their ass mm -hmm. up at 8.30. They don't want to go out. No. Be, look. We were just talking about this off camera, but um, my like a city can beat you. Yeah. You fly into Miami. Six men. Right? Six men. Six and we men. all know, like we heard the stories up until the point where you fly into Miami mm -hmm. and you hear the vet. No quick turn around. Right. Don't stall me. Get us down. Mm -hmm. So we can land and go to the club, right? <laughs> and you get there and you party. But we got Miami Heat and D Wade tomorrow. Right. Right? He already know what to do the rest up. We thinking D-Wade going to be at the party with us. Right, exactly. Never seen no, we don't see no never. Heat players. Heat. We know never. see no Heat never. player in sight ever, ever. <laughs> ever. But we in there. We partying. Girls are sent in to give us the good night treat. 
And we get up in the next, the next morning is Patron and Hennessy. You smell it all of them. In the, everybody tired, drained out. You done, you done emptied a couple. It's like, shit, man, who we playing tonight? Who we playing? Uh, we Pro. already lost before we got no, it. No, no, when we played them in the, when, when we played in the playoffs, yeah. right? Back played them in the playoffs. Year. And we're there. So we're there three, four, five days. Ain't seen the heat playing sight. No, not no prime one twelve. No, say, me not no we got club. swept too. Right, we, so we got swept shit. too. Smacked out the shit. goddamn arena. Yeah. I was so, in the mall, out shopping, everything. Ain't seen no, 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 heat. Like, like, man, where the, where the heat at? Right. Like, nah, yeah. <laughs> you don't really see them during the season. <laughs> and it really same thing with what's gonna happen in Vegas. Yep, same thing. Whoever oh, gets yeah, that, sure. they're gonna put in a system where y'all gonna be in that gym so long. And working, mm -hmm. and y'all gonna be too tired to to really enjoy what the exactly. city's about. Yeah. yeah, I've been to the beach on the sand. Be honest with you, six years I was there, maybe two times. Shit, I'm not going out there. I'm yeah. tired. Yeah. I'm tired as fuck. Mm -hmm. But that structure probably helped you even outside of basketball. For sure. Like you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That that's some that's the kind of training that helps you off the court as well. 100%. Yeah, and luckily, you know, I was blessed to have mom and dad at home, and that's how my dad was. My dad, to this day, got two NBA kids and still waking up at 5.30 in the morning to go work. That's it's like, bro, why are you working still? But he loved it. He loved the process. He loved the structure of getting up and things like that. So once I got there, it was easy for me to, like, oh, my dad treat me like this. Did they come come with you out to Miami at all? No. Well, they came to visit, but I was really me and my boy. Dola. Yeah, okay. I was solo dolo. They trusted me because of the year of prep school that matured me and got me ready because if I would have went from L.A. to there, I would have been, I would have been back quick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would have been real. I would back That's quick. just wild to think because you hear all these horror stories of guys who are too young, immature, get put in those situations. Yep. And it's not you going to a whack city. I won't name any NBA city because people will get mad at me, <laughs> but it's all like places like that. You got to go to Miami now where all that temptation is, yep. you know, right at your doorstep and lock in and be able to show up at the gym on time and do all that shit where a lot of guys couldn't handle that. So, yeah. And, I, and a, a funny story, because I'm not going to act like I just stayed in the house. I used to go hang out, and, um, and Pat found out I was hanging out on the beach. I'm underage. So he called me in the office. He's like, man, you out there hanging out with them adults. You need to go to the University of Miami and hang out. And my best friend, Jack McClinton, was a star at Miami. Okay, Jack. And I told, I told Pat, I was like, I'm up there too, dog. <laughs> you late. I'm already up there, dog. I'm doing my thing up there. <laughs> you got a few of them up there already, coach. I'm double dipping on here. Uh, Don't leave me alone. So obviously you work for the Warriors. Mm -hmm. You know, can't let you come on the couch and not talk about just the, yeah. the state of this team, the future of this team. We talked about LeBron coming into year 21, but Steph's about to be in year 15. Right. I think he'll be, what, 36 next mm. March. Mm. So how much longer can Steph play at a high level? You know, putting up the 30 piece this year, pretty much the only guy consistently when the Warriors got smacked by LeBron and the Lakers, but he was keeping that team in it. But you, we're starting to get to this point now where it's like, you know, LeBron's going to be out the league the next three or four years. Yeah. Steph, Katie, all these the kind of old guard. So when you look at Steph, how much longer do you think he can play at this high level? I think he could play another five years at this level. Wow. Just because of his, his body, how he takes care of his body. Uh, he's in tip-top shape. Uh, and at the end of the day, he could still be a stand, you know, spot-up shooter. You know, he don't have to run off all those screens later in his career. So I think his ability to make shots from anywhere on the court, his ability to get to his mid-range and handle the basketball will allow him to add an extra three or four years on the end and still be successful like we see with LeBron. Now we see him in the post. So I think we can see the same thing with Steph, just being more of a spot-up shooter. I mean, then he can turn into Clay. Shit. <laughs> yeah. Shit. I just to think about that, that that's yeah. what it is. He can yeah. sit there and just turn into clay. I just yeah. sit here and just, you know, come off a little quick string, shoot it, mm -hmm. sit there and just wait. Yeah. Yeah, because the shot not going to go nowhere. No, yeah. Going the nowhere. Shot, and, and every time you're on the court, it's a threat. So yeah. you got to keep your eyes on him. Like, mm -hmm. You can't just leave Steph like, oh, he old now. It's like. So what, four, 41 averaging about, what, 17, 18? Yeah, for oh sure. Oh, my God. That's yeah. easy. That's shit. Jordan Poole. I'm saying probably too much. <laughs> That's Jordan Poole. But really think about it. If all Steph got to do is shoot threes, he don't got to do all that running around and shit. But that's what makes him great, too. Yeah, that, for you know. sure. It's going to depend what's around him as well yeah. mm -hmm. and what, what kind of role he's going to have to play because all that running that he's doing, like, as you get older, that's going to be tough. Yeah, yeah for sure. Works. Think about yeah. how that sounds, though. Turns into Clay Thompson. I know. That's, that's fucking bad. crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. Like, yeah, okay, Steph, you can't do Steph shit no more, so be Clay. 
That's still damn good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Yeah, right. That's cheating. Yeah. yeah. And when we look at these Warriors, a lot of uncertainty. Draymond can opt out this year, become a free agent. We talk about, you know, potentially moving Jordan Poole, the young guys, Kaminga Moody, those guys. St uh, Clay's going to be a free agent in 2024. He's looking for his bread. Yeah. So, you know, we thought when LeBron and Lakers took him down that, that we had seen the end of the Warriors dynasty, quote unquote. But you're around this team a lot. You see the squad, the potential they can go in the future. So have we seen the end of the Warriors dynasty? I don't think so. I feel like they all understand they need each other. And uh, those are all great guys, too. You know, not too big yeah. egos, you know, humble superstars. Uh, they let Draymond be him, you know, and that's just who Draymond is. You know, he's the, the more the vocal leader. So I feel like they all three of those guys need each other. And I don't really see that breaking up. OK, so I see I see them coming together and thinking and trying to figure out what how it's going to work. Can we talk about it? Th this is Gil Zarini. You know, that's what we do. Can we talk about it? Go ahead. How much did that punch impact um, the team morale? Well, I'm not in the locker room, but for me, looking from outside like us, I feel like it, it really did some damage to the team because, you know, that was one of your young fellas, somebody that you really depend on. Uh, Jordan Poole had a great playoffs last year. Mm -hmm. You know, he was one of, you know, he was top four of that team that was, uh, you know, that helped them be successful. So I think, uh, like Steve Kerr mentioned it, they got to figure it out in the offseason and build – their trust back, you know, it's not something that's broken. Right. You know what I mean? I feel like it could be, it could be uh, fixed, you know, with maturity and just conversation. It's not gonna happen overnight, and it's hard to do something in the season. You know, yeah. everything goes yeah. so fast. So yeah. hopefully, this summertime they can sit down and you know try to be. It's just hard though. Yeah, you no, it's definitely out. hard. You get socked out like yeah. that. It's just hard. <laughs> yeah. Like, so you see how he just talks just, about like, yeah. 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 because that's the reality. Yeah, no, no, that's the reality. Out, I mean, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we don't see you getting knocked out. <laughs> Like you, damn, hug got knocked out, hug. With the head, hug got, got knocked, knocked out. out. <laughs> I knew that. He's like, he's trying to add, he's trying to add. Hey, like, knock you out, bud. He's trying to make sure it stays <laughs> yeah. knocked out. How you going to yeah. find him knocked out like that? Can't do that, man. Yeah, like, that's man. real, I mean, but that's real <laughs> shit, though, especially for a young guy. Like, pool fights happen. All the time, I think if that video doesn't get out, yeah, maybe it's a little bit different, but just the embarrassment factor. Like, we've been talking about that shit since October, since it happened. Like, you know, you had, you had fans in Milwaukee giving Draymond a pass, you know yeah. what I mean? But it, like, yeah. it was some deep, serious shit. Right. Mm -hmm. So do you think that, that that relationship with, with Poole can stay, or do they need to look at moving him? Does he need just to change the scenery to get back to the level he can get? It looked get like to? it hurt, I'm just going to say. It looked <laughs> yeah. like it hurt. Mm -hmm. I feel like if the goal is a championship, the, the Golden State Warriors are going to do whatever it takes to, to win. So whether that's getting that relationship right or moving on from them, they're going to do that. But I think and I know they understand somebody that understands the system, and he helped us win the championship already, let's try to figure it out. Okay. And then, you know, we have a conversation with Jordan Poole. If you feel comfortable here or not, then we move on. From okay. It. Do you add pieces to that team? I feel like they're right there. You got JK, you got Moody. I feel like you have to add the right pieces because if you look at the makeup of that team and that particular punch you were talking about, I think it might have created a greater divide that might have been an underlying divide on the team because you got to remember the makeup of this team. Draymond, the veteran, punches the young kid, young pool. You look at the makeup of this team, which is very different from the championship year team. You got a lot of guys that are first, second, third year guys. Coming and comes to the league is 19 years old, is 20 years old. You got Moody. You got you know all these young guys. Then you got another group of guys, which are the vets that have been there, done that, won championships. Draymond, Steph, Clay, and even Looney to a certain degree. But what do you have in the middle? Right, so you, you, you get kind of a high school effect here where you have clicks, right? You have the young guys hanging out with each other, maybe feeling a little salty when the older guys are, 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 are banging on him, saying like, oh man, fuck that guy. Why does he keep saying, he get on me, oh, he, keeps, he thinks because he won championships he can talk to me this way. But like, so I think that bringing in vets that are six, seven, eight year in the league guys to kind of mend those two together that can relate with the young players, and knows all the little rappers and all that shit. Yeah. And then the, the OG, and then <laughs> can mend the thing between the OGs, and then they're together. I think it'll have a more cohesive unit than having a team that's made up of primarily young guys and primarily old guys and nothing in between to mend the two. Yeah, that's a good point. Like, that is. Yeah, that's a good point. We be talking about that, yeah. No, that's, that, 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 I, that was, you need a bridge yeah. between the young and the new, and I think that was really the punch factor. Mm -hmm. You punch the leader. <laughs> of the young group to say, this is how shit's gonna be, exactly. to try to get y'all on board. Um,
The young dude's got to jump Draymond and, and respond. No, no, no. I, that's, that's what, what I, that's the only way I said. Out. We should jump him. Let's <laughs> jump him. <laughs> but, but let's <laughs> jump him. Y'all got on the team. We're like, fuck, we're going to jump this nigga. Let's, let's jump him, man. I, 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 was in, I was in Washington when the team was vet and just young. Yeah. Right there, we had no in between. So I know, I literally know how that shit looks. Mm-hmm. Like, when you just got the vets, vets don't give a fuck about them. They are trying to get that. They realize, oh, well, fuck, you, fuck them too. Yeah. Right? And then, you know, we got Quran. <laughs> Pass me the ball like I'm 21. <laughs> right? Oh, yeah, this shit was funny. Because yeah. when they got on the court with Quran, the young kids, we ain't passing them the ball. Mm. Oh, nah. Oh, no. Nick. Uh, you have you have JaVale. Nick, JaVale, Andre Blasio. Oh, yeah, they not black. Black. oh, yeah. oh, oh yeah. Andre was it's, a black hole. He didn't it was a four on one. Oh, man. And it like it was just to the point where you got the number one option getting pushed out of the offense wow. because these young boys like, nah, we ain't, nah, don't pass it's our ball. time. That's right, crazy. you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. I get it. And you really do have to say, all right, listen, pool, you won a championship. W- what do you want now? Right? You want a championship? Do yeah. you want to go try to be the man yourself? Mm-hmm. And we can trade you to a team where, you know, we can get back some pieces that's going to help us. Or we're going to have to figure out a way to, to bring this team closer together. Yeah, that's it. And I think that gap, that person might have been GP too, the reason why they brought him back. You know what I mean? I mm-hmm. feel like GP can go both ways. He could be with the older guys. He could be with the younger guys. Yeah. yeah. Ain't that going back to mid-level exception? When they got they got rid of the mid level exception, that was the actual middleman. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was the yeah. that was the, the 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 guy who can get the middle salary four, five, six years yeah. in the league. Right. They got rid of that just because you know they wanted the star players mm-hmm. and the role players. Yeah. yeah, they wanted the middle. They want well, they they want the mid level. They just want them to be poor. Yeah, yeah, for sure. They, they, they <laughs> rich rich poor. Just rich no middle poor. class. Yeah, America. No middle yeah. class. Rich, no middle the class. rich, and then there's mm-hmm. poor. We don't want the middle class. Yeah, facts. Right, and that same thing with the NBA. You want your superstars, and then you want everybody under this point. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's not really how the game is, man. Yeah, man that's crazy too. Now it's time for my favorite segment of the show. We've been cooking, y'all. It's been an hour, fifty minutes. We got about a good ten minutes left to go, depending on how much I want to keep talking. But we got mostly fans coming up. <laughs> y'all niggas, go, y'all t- talk so time. You know, it's, it's, it's the weekend this is my for it. Favorite part of the show because it's the end of the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Damn. Yeah. You gotta put that on the real. You gotta put it on the real. He does not want to be at work. Today. He always says, "This is my best I'm part of the show." Of work. Let, let me home, man. I'm it's home. Get to go home. Man. I'm home. No, I love <laughs> communicating with the fans that support this glorious show. If we did mostly fans at the top of the show, I would enjoy it. But then we wouldn't allow the fans to put those questions in okay. to get us to this point. That's a good move. That's a good move. Go come back. But it is Thursday, and this is our last segment. We get a little break. I be tired of shit every day doing the show. I ain't gonna go look. Every time I walk in this month, I'm tired. Like, damn, sweaty. You Jamaican man. You got. 20 jobs. <laughs> <laughs> you got 20 jobs. Oh, I gotta go here and get the Jamaican. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that just made me sweat. I don't know man. how you long this shit gonna last for. Hey, man. Hey, man. I'm the butler, the baker. <laughs> so, the first question is from K, just K. One letter. That's all you need. Uh, what is the most money that you spend in one night? Gil, we'll start with you. <laughs> one night? <laughs> I know what that is. <laughs> Ooh. Like out in the club or something? Yeah. It's like uh, sixty grand. Oh, what about your birthday party? Yeah, what about the DC? But that's not. That wasn't a one that night was thing. That was. That, 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 okay, that, that, that was a one night. I had yeah. to. So you know, that, what, what, was it a consistent? Though. It was a consistent amount of nights, though, right? It was. No, no, I had to like book. You know, the hotel yeah, ended up costing. And then like two money. days later, I had to book this hotel, then flight. So it wasn't like in a one. Night. But, but it was, yeah, it was you're all right. For that one night, though. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so for that one event, two mil. That's killer. Even even not when, when I think about it, I'm thinking fifty nine in the in the in a club. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? Buying bottles and shit that I didn't drink. Just one of the <laughs> club promoter back there. I'm trying to like, yeah, yeah. I, I can do this. Yeah. Right? Back. But it was um it was the club because I had to buy I had to buy out hotels. Okay. Dang. Right? Like the whole night I had this, so yeah. When you were buying up bottles of people were drinking, I think I asked you this before, but were you staring at I like to monitor pours. If I buy a bottle, like if oh, niggas I don't know, don't over pour, dog. Yeah. No, 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 One no, shot. No, I didn't care. I was it was a it was a battle. It was okay. that's why I didn't them sparkler shit. Yeah. Once them came out, oh we flexing now. Yeah. Right? right? So I'm with Antoine. Listen, I'm with Antoine. Club <laughs> promoter back there. Got all the girls and shit. It's men, me and Antoine, it's his birthday party for his girl. Just just four of us. Uh-huh. He he bought six. He about to do this shit now, right behind me. Give, give me, give me, what's that? Give me 10. Right? It was to the point where I said, you know what? I don't drink. Fuck it. Hey, all the Fiji water in, in here, every fucking bottle, right. I want all of it. 
I want it. They was like, wait, all of the, all, every pack, it comes in six. I want them all and then put the, the shits, yeah. make it a choo-choo train. So there was just this long ass choo-choo train line of just water. Was this at Live? Yep. I was there. Yo, you was there? Yeah, I was. Yeah. I remember you ain't getting, You ain't going to be hydrated, <laughs> goddammit. You ain't going to hydrate. Ain't that. no water for you. That's, you was there? Yeah, <laughs> all, I want there. all the fucking water. That's trolling. Yeah. Yeah. All yeah. the water. Trolling at his, at his finest. Brandon, how he, hey, everybody can get some. Not him. <laughs> Not him. <laughs> uh, me? Uh, man, I like to spend. Uh, shit. Maybe like four fifty, five hundred thousand. Oh, yeah, and that was off jury and cars and like partying. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah. In one night? <laughs> yeah, and like one day, I, I I think like when I first signed, like when I signed or something, I just was like, yo, I need 500k, and I'm gonna just go crazy. Ooh. I bought like a Range, a Royce, and like just jewelry. Went out to the club, just like, all right, I respect that's my plan. It. Yeah, I respect it. How about yourself, Rashad? 125. Ah. Yeah, on the party. <sighs> yeah, it's a big ass party on BT weekend, and okay, I got the Marilyn Monroe mansion. <laughs> Fucking trucks, food, cigars, all kind of shit. Plexiglass over the pool. Oh, wow. What Had the that? whole guest. It, it was uh, BET Weekend uh, 2012. Marilyn Monroe, where, where's that? Uh, Sunset Boulevard, up in the hills. Mm. Yeah, they use it for the porn now. They use big ass no. for porn now. Of course. I think they was using it then. I was trying to of get a couple. Of nasty. Hey, I'm just saying. Acting. Nasty Nate. Nasty Nate. Acting. But they, threw a, acting. Uh, they threw a Diddy party the same day. I had my party and everybody went to his party and not mine. So Were you hurt? That, oh yeah, that money went out the goddamn window. And I ain't. Just remember that. Oh, well, I enjoyed myself that night. That's all. That's the most important thing. That shit gone. I need that now. <laughs> right. How about yourself, man? I've been fortunate enough to be with some good vets, man, that's okay. been looked out for me. So I think the most I spent in a night is about ten racks, I see. and that was Beautiful. on that was on Delon's twenty first birthday in, okay. in Vegas. So okay. I bought him shit I never bought myself. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. <laughs> couldn't believe but it. I had I had to do my brother a solid, man. Right, that's, nice. a, that's a good mm-hmm. big brother. Uh, this is my, see, hey, vets, my you see, kicked his ass yeah, to the right. point where he only wants to spend no money. <laughs> <laughs> do the bros give back though? My little brother? Yeah, do they do they show love back to you? Oh, man. I can't pull my wallet yeah. out around okay. my brother, man. I be feeling like he... he yeah, we saw him in D.C. Like, he was out there. Legend. Yeah, 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 yeah. Legend. The right family. The right brothers. The right Sir. brothers. All right, so next question. This is from Alante. All right, look, Chad. All right, we're going we're gonna, to... I got to talk about this. Y'all be putting hashtag <laughs> good question. You ain't oh, You got to hear what the, with the money the, man. The upness. Yeah, the Come money on, man. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I might be the cheapest motherfucker alive. Oh, All right, man. so I don't spend money like that. Going out, I don't... I have money, but I like to hang out with my rich friends. Right. Okay. So I just go sit with them at their table, and then they'll, t- they'll take care of me. But as far as a single purchase, I did go out. I bought myself a $450,000 Rolls Royce, okay. and I regretted it immediately, immediately because yeah. the very next day, I had seven different employees ask me for a raise. Oh. Wow. This so is that, what we that was talk way about. more expensive than $450,000. That yeah. cost me far more than that. So I said that was the dumbest move I've mm-hmm. ever done. So I returned that motherfucker almost the very next week. <laughs> you got to get like an 8800 Accord. <laughs> it ain't no, like... It ain't. <laughs> It's all I can get, it's a all businessman I can get. told me this once. He said, listen, when you're making money, always complain. Mm. Always complain about it, complain about your bills, complain about this so your employees don't get the urge. If they see you making money, they're going to ask for a raise. Yeah, oh, yeah. So Very like when you buy, like, oh, God damn it, the bills, and, you know, I got to pay this. <laughs> <laughs> got to get a new washer, this and this. Just be making up shit just so they're not pocket watching. Right. God yeah. damn it, the bills. Not yeah. for real. He bought a car, and then everybody want a raise. Oh, we, uh, yeah. we doing that good? Yeah. yeah. We doing hella good. We doing hella good. <laughs> yeah. So ne- next question from Alante, and this is what I was going to say. It says, hashtag good question, hashtag great question. You got to pick one. Is it good or is it great? Okay, we can't. Don't switch up on us. So it's for each of y'all. What was the toughest place to play? Mm. Toughest place to play. I mean, I never scored fucking 30 against Portland. Really? <laughs> <laughs> so like the and they had sorry teams. I don't know. I, <laughs> it was the only team I didn't. But to play against, really, probably one of them boring-ass cities like Memphis. 
Memphis mm. boy, Detroit. Yeah, Detroit. Yeah, Memphis. Did it's you just, like the barbecue? Yeah, like game? Detroit was hard for me to plan. Just like, getting like up, when just I getting on the up for the game. You know, ain't got no fucking room service in the room, so right. you're sitting there. This you, is before Postmates too, and Uber. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like Utah used to be tough. It's just New like Boston. it's just oh, like yeah. like those like those yeah. towns when you get in, you just like ah, oh, this is ugly. OKC, yeah. like, yeah. just nasty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OKC like, was nasty. Yeah, just nasty. But Milwaukee was nasty back then to me. It's like I never played good. It's improved. OKC, a lot of infrastructure out there. Yeah. Because that's when uh, Marquette used to do a little bit better than them. It would really nobody was there. And Peabody like Hotels at Memphis. Yeah. The Peabody. Oh my! With the ducks. <laughs> with the ducks. Oh my god! I remember we had to come out them ducks. Everybody was lined up for them damn ducks. <laughs> yeah, that Shit, that I, I was like, this is what y'all, y'all come here every day to see fucking <laughs> ducks going yeah. to a yeah. pond. Yeah. <laughs> this is, the, this is out. what the city is about. Ducks <laughs> going into a pond at a certain time. Like, uh-huh. This is some roped off too. You couldn't even walk on the red carpet. Like man, fuck them ducks. Fuck them ducks. Bro, I went to Memphis last year for. Iverson class that they told me about, I didn't know what the fuck was going on, then saw the line of human beings just to watch the fucking ducks. I'm just like, I'll be there tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> you going out there? Yeah, EYBL What's, session. Okay, EYBL mm-hmm. yeah, for sure. Hey, that's a, yeah, Bill Street, all that shit. I'm just like, okay, I, I can see why John feels a certain way about how, what's going on. <laughs> He's trying to create his own fun. <laughs> <laughs> all right, then this last question, just need a quick response from y'all. They said, tell him not to overthink it. <laughs> Which team would you go to? Oh, this is from George Lucas. I don't know if it's the Star Wars, Indiana Jones nigga, but it could be. He might watch the show. Which team would, would each of y'all go to right now, even you, Jason, if they were in their prime to get a ring? Jason, we'll start with you. Which team would I go to if they were in their prime to get a ring? The Lakers, hands down. Okay. Yeah. You are your prime. I mean, yeah, I'm, 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 I grew up a Laker fan. Milwaukee. Okay. Well, one four. I'm, I'm going back. They're in their prime. You got the chain huh? ring. You, the, the players are in their prime or are in our prime? You're in your prime. Oh, oh, me, yeah. Oh, I yeah. Didn't. The chain ring, phenomenal. For sure, hell yeah. Houston. Is it current team? Right now? Is it the current mm-hmm. team? You said to win a championship? The current team right now, you're going to Houston to, to win a chip? No, I'm going to Houston so I can have 40. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you're not tripping on the chip. <laughs> <laughs> it's to get a ring. Hey, young fellas, know. get out my way. <laughs> get out my way. Y'all get the sprite. One more flash. <laughs> Good day. <laughs> One more flash. I'm sure I'm about to go every day. <laughs> Miami Heat. <laughs> you are a lifelong fan of just the past week. Miami Heat, baby. Right. You beat the I'm going with the Miami Heat, bro. You <laughs> just. Get, I'm, a I'm a dog. I'm a dog. I'm another go Warriors, man. Okay. Yeah. Give me about eight, ten threes a game. Well, they give me a check. That's understandable. We're all about pandering with purpose here. Nah, that's, ahead, not that's, 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 that's fact. Good. Eight. Yeah, you are gonna get them shots. You are gonna let you yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. Gonna move you gonna move the Yeah, you are gonna mm-hmm. let you get them threes out. Be that motherfucker. Be that. Be right. Be right. So sure. Darrell Wright, Jason of Beverly Hills, we appreciate y'all Thank pulling you. up. Thank you. We appreciate all you watching. Appreciate Underdog Fantasy. Download the app. Use promo code Gill. Don't match your first deposit up to 100 bucks. This has been Gill's Arena. We will see y'all back on Tuesday, I believe. Let's all have a great weekend. Be yes, safe. Talk Come about back it. Come back ready it's to Memorial do it. Day weekend. Y'all be safe yeah, out be there. Be yeah, safe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Memorial yeah. Day weekend. Smoke some. We lit. We lit this week. 10,000 in the chat. I smoke some. the Gill Pack. I got daddy dude. Look, with the honor call for greatness, the chosen a few that carry the gift of genius. Who do what they do? Who possess finesse the blessed with desire